Welcome, everybody, here to the top five plays of the week from Esports U. Clutch Key helping to bring you those top plays, so let's get things started. In Valorant, it's the Loyola Maryland Greyhounds taking on the Army West Point Black Knights, taking to map number one on Icebox, and the Greyhounds winning the pistol round, so it's looking good for them to go up 10 to 4, but with the marshal it's mib police from the black knights on the case at the same time but that opportunity won't be afforded desung though could turn this into a rifle potentially more mib police from the raptors doing work with the marshal and might even present a greater threat jumping down with the classic the turn to a right click hero a marshal in hand and mib police secures a 4k Force round be a heroic play from MIB police, but it would be the Black Knights taking Icebox and winning the series two to nothing. Let's go to Rocket League with the St. Lawrence Saints and the Bengals of Buffalo State. Down by one in game number three, and the Bengals are looking for that equalizer in the final minute of the game. Luckily, Jesco decides that, yeah, overtime is probably a good thing going into the last minute. hard in order to even think about getting an insurance goal here. Oh boy, it does feel like SLU as well. Just trying to play survival mode. No, maybe they're thriving instead. A good bouncer from Elmo Fingers does get past one defender. Turks moving this across the width of the field. The pinch finding the midfield here. Good catch from Jesco. Putting a shot on target as well. Jesco. Overtime, it would go in game number three. And actually, the Saints would win overtime. But as for the series, it would be all Buffalo State taking the dub four to one. Overwatch 2 action with the Great Danes of Albany and the Spartans of UNC Greensboro. Third map on Havana and the Great Danes want to cap first point in just under a minute when Magix has a trick up their sleeve and in fact, they might have more than one. Out of here, they want to get that kill and they're doing it. Jesse, they are doing it. Now Magix is back on the field. Lobs Nick's head, oh my god. Showing Volks in the business end of that too. The payload is still being contested and it's all... Oh my. Not only is Magix want a sniper, but... The Spartans had a one of their own in the form of a broom as the Spartans would go on to win the series three to nothing. To League of Legends, where the Polar Bears of Ohio Northern take on the Dukes of James Madison. 12th minute in game number two, and the Polar Bears want their second dragon. On the Keanu, though, Show Me is about to show us what robbery on the rift looks like. Great rotation onto this. They got the first dragon. They are likely to pick up the second here, and the Show Me can somehow make this work. Oh, they're trying and over the wall they got a ward okay. and said snipe and the seal okay. the seal from show me said you only dragon stolen and even with the kill lead the polar bears also got that stolen away in the end dukes would come out with the dub two to nothing let's head to overwatch 2 action with the aggies of utah state taking on the rams of colorado state down a map on nepal and the rams need to make some sort of comeback to force map three well, a crazy team fight leads up to why Death Trap lives up to the tag. You're going to be in a great position. This dragon strike might be able to create some separation, <laughs> but Cass is just taking heads. Cass rolls the head of the finish right now. There's the Terra Search. Is he going to find anything? Is the question. Immortality Butte having to be used. This Death three. Trap finds a triple. Oh my goodness. Death Trap finds a fourth. He's going to find the team kill. It's now the Rams would force map number three, but the Aggies were too strong for the rest of the contest, and the Utah State Aggies get the sweep three to nothing. To Summoner's Rift in League, where the Aztecs of San Diego State take on the Spartans of San Jose State. Game one and all the advantages to the Aztecs 30 minutes in, and Devourer on the Caitlyn makes sure it stays that way to march to the base. Half health. Actually, with the Chaos Storm dropped as well, oh. that might be the go button as everyone follows the rock, and it's not going to be enough off the outset. Tom Goku shut down in the back line, and it's all falling apart for this fight that San Jose chose to take the adcs are all together Piao picked up a kill on the back side tabula rasa's surviving forever eventually the aztecs would go on to win game number one but something clicks in the spartans and san jose would win the series two to one to valorant with andromeda taking on the university of houston scarlet team map number two on fracture and andromeda wants to push a site but binko is sitting around the corner and even with little to no utility Pinkle just finds a way to make heads roll. One for one trade, make it one for two as Slorth takes down Altier, trying to trade for Orchid. Binko now trapped in a corner. They're shooting out the Prowlers, and there's not a lot of places that Binko can go, but now only Slorth being the one peeking oh! Binko. What was that? Binko An calls ace? bingo on the ace, and it would be Houston who calls game on Fracture as they win the series two to nothing. To come through, it's just playing aimbot. And that's it from Top Plays of the Week from Esports U. Thanks for watching, everybody. And until next time, this is Clutch Key signing off.
I can't say that. I'll get in trouble. There's one for each game, so teams this weekend, somebody's going to have to explain to TSA why they're coming home with an extra trophy. Fine. We're fine. This is going to be great. Why is everybody staring at me? I'm not even doing anything yet. Is it because I'm in a suit? It looks nice. It's new. I'm stressing. I'm stressing. It's all right. We win these. We absolutely win these. I've never seen us lose these. I love him. I, think, I don't remember his name. What is going on, everybody? And Oh, are we ready? I'll start over. Okay. What's going on, everybody? We are here at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. The players are just now entering the arena for day one. A lot of them had the opportunity to be here yesterday to get jerseys, to get familiar with the area, and to get to know one another. But today, the friendly gloves have to come off, and they are all here. Earlier, I was talking to these guys. This mannequin, when they didn't have anything else set up, I could see it from all the way down there, and I thought it was a person. And I stood there for like five minutes, and I was like, why is he standing like that? And I thought it was like a smooth criminal. I thought somebody was giving us like a Michael Jackson impression, and then it was a mannequin. I was really embarrassed to admit that. Oh my God, that's a lot of people. Hold on, let's go over this one. Window. Let's go over this window. It just keeps going. There's so many people outside. There are so many people outside. We're gonna interview people when they come in. I don't really want to go outside. It looks like it's gonna rain and this suit is new. So, oh, there's Doc Haskell. Hi, Doc. How are you? He, he brings a full notebook with him and like writes notes down. It was pretty insane. He had it yesterday. He's gonna be coming through this metal detector right here. I don't know his name though, but I recognize his hair. Jen. You're Jen. All right, we're gonna interview Jen, who's supporting Kennesaw. We're at the Collegiate Sports Commissioner's Cup. Let's make some noise. Ow. Oh, and it's going to be into it. The corner judge is good for one, two, ten. He needs more. In the They're doing even more here. you have got to touch the point. Mr. College walks it in. Toy Boy is going to drop. Knife him. Right out front. Yeah. Three, oh, two, one. Please. Running. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the ECAC Esports channel. My name is Whoopshoe. Joining alongside of you for today's action is going to be my good friend, Captain at Soka, in the booth with me today. Cap, it's an absolute honor for you to be here. I hardly get to work with you, so this is going to be something exciting. We have Fisher College taking on Iona. Talk nice. to me did. about this today. I'm sorry, Cap. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I'm just excited to get into it. Like, you're telling me to talk to you about it. I'm like, yes, let's go. Let's go. But <laughs> yes, I mean, Fisher College, again, been watching them for so long. They are such a great, well-rounded team. And now they're going to have, you know, the challenges stepping up to the plate, trying to, trying to take down what is considered to be one of the biggest titans in Rocket League Collegiate. And it's going to be interesting to see Iona. You know, they definitely have their work cut out for them going into this one. But if they do manage to pull it off, they will put, like really submit themselves in the collegiate space of Rocket League. So a lot of opportunity here. Yeah, Iona is pretty much uh, an uphill battle at this point in time, but they do have a little bit of help. I'm not too sure who the starting roster is going to be for Fisher, but I think I did hear through the grapevine that they're not going to have full force. So they do actually have, in my personal opinion, a good chance here to take this series away. And I do want to point out as well that regardless of who does win this matchup, both teams do qualify for that Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup over in Arlington, Texas. So both of these teams are going to be there fighting uh, May 6th and May 7th live at that land. So it's going to be awesome to see that. If you guys are in the Texas region, please go ahead and stop by. And uh, there's going to be a lot of great Rocket League teams there. A lot of great uh, just, you know, just players in general, I should say, you know, going to be there. I'm unfortunately not going to be there. Cap's not going to be there. Going to be there a couple days late, I believe, as well. So you guys aren't, aren't going to see our pretty faces there at the land but if you guys want some more information at that please go over to collegiate smg.com that's collegiate smg.com and i also want to point out cap real quick that iona did qualify through the maac to be there at arlington and fisher will get the ecac bid as well so like i said beforehand both of these teams are ready to be at that land 100%, and I cannot wait to get into this one. I mean, you know that Iona is going to be a formidable team just because they did qualify for land. Like, that is no easy feat in and of itself. So already, you have to give this team credit where credit is due, and they're going to be going up against, you know, Fisher College, who is, of course, you know, one of the big titans in Collegiate Rocket League. So, uh, again, both of these teams definitely worth their medal here as they try and take a win over the other as we get game number one well and underway. 
Starting roster here for Fisher College going to be Kevin Tasek and Random Shy. And Tasek going to start off with some fireworks here. Fisher going to go up only 15 seconds off the clock. Yeah, and look at this flippery dude off Philip flip reset. Nothing beats a good amount of Fennec finesse. And it's all the power in the Fennec right there. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure Tasek has put in a lot of practice, a lot of hours. But something about that Fennec that just brings that extra level of finesse. I agree with you on that one. Fennec is one of my favorite cars here in Rocket League. And a lot of pros actually switching over to the Fennec as well. Away from the Octane. Just due to the 50-50s. Open net opportunity right here for Fisher. That's going to be Random Shy shooting that one off to the left-hand side. Just slightly. But the follow-up touch from Kevin. Going to put Fisher College in great position. Starting this ballgame off 2-0. to zero. And you see nothing too fancy here. Just a good textbook pass play to find the backboard and then find the back of the net. The nice one-two give and go. And now Fisher College have a 2 to nil lead. Ridiculous start to this ball game here for Fisher. And Iona find themselves backed up into a corner, but there's still a lot of time left, which is even more impressive. Two goals scored, 15 seconds apiece for Fisher. Now some possession goes to Iona. A big miss right there from Tasek. Still, that one's going to be cleared over into the corner. Iona needs to do something here with this possession on the offensive side. Going to be met at midfield is DJ. Good 50-50 right here as well is Kevin. That was going to be popped over into the corner, though. Yeah, and right now it does seem like Fisher College do have the majority of the possession. They're playing fantastic at that midfield line. And then look at the goal of a random shy to take it back in their own territory and bring it back forward all while, con while controlling the ball in one fell swoop. Truly fantastic control coming from random shy. Stone D on the defensive end. Needs to stop that shot right there from Kevin. He does do just that. This is going to be advanced upfield. Jeremy doing a little bit of the work here. Good 50 right there from, I believe that was uh, Stone D himself. Look at Tasek though with the redirect. This one's going to be off the backboard. Tough read right here for the defense. Random shot. Going to float that one right towards Stone D. Easy save right there for Iona. Yeah, and right now I'm actually liking what I'm seeing from Iona. They're beginning the challenge Fisher at that midfield line, and they're winning some of their 50-50s. The only problem is, is that when they try and transition, that's when the speed of Fisher College really starts to outpace the likes of Iona. But, you know, so far so good for the time being. Fisher College still had uh, held to only two goals. Like I said beforehand, this is not Fisher College starting roster. Typically, we see Sosa out here. We see a little bit of money action as well. But still getting the job done here as we approach the halfway point in this game number one. I want to reiterate that this is a best of seven series. And this is the ECAC Spring 2023 Finals. Both of these teams obviously want to win this one. Get that title underneath their belt. But it's a matter of who is going to do that and how many games it's going to take them to do so. All right. Now, if I'm capping, by all means, say captain's captain. But... I have to point out that Fisher College's vehicles are drippy as fudge. Like, am I, am I tripping right now, or are they just bringing the decals out today? Uh, I don't know. Kevin has some uh, pretty decent decal right there as well. It's a black Fennec, too. It uh, looks like some black Cristianos. And we have another black Cristiano pair right here as well from Tasek. I mean, Tasek is all right. I would say Tasek is probably the worst one here out of Fisher College. <laughs> and, and you know it's it's just i bring it up because i literally put no effort into my vehicles whatsoever i got like blank red and you know blue and then that's the extent of well, my creative I'm, prowess i'm just gonna tell you that's what happens when you're garbage at the game you don't care what you look like okay captain moving on back into this ball game a minute and 35 seconds left here in game number one i'm sorry i'm sorry i had to it was easy you laid it up for me Hey, that's all right. I mean, I, I I got my GC title, okay? I put in the work once before, lay way, way, way long ago. So long ago I had hair, but not going to be too long, or at least that long, for Tasek to find the back of the net yet again for Fisher College as now they go up 3 to nil over Iona. Yeah, it's just a smart play right here from Tasek on the back end. Random Shy with a good far clear and just advances that one away from their net. And then Tasek doing the rest of the dirty work with that redirect into the back of the net. Huge goal right there. Good team performance as well. Iona still struggling to get on the board, though. And they almost get the job mm. done. But what was the whiffs? It feels bad. Tactical whiffs all abound, both on Fisher College and Iona. But it is still going to be scoreless here in game number one for Iona as they look to try and rectify that here and now. Final 60 seconds are on the clock. Iona need to start to strike. Haven't really had too many chances on the offensive end just yet. 
can't recall pretty much any shot really that kind of went towards the net for Iona they had a couple of chances there was one right there it's gonna be denied by Taysek though there was a, that one floater as well this one Jeremy trying to go for the 50 50 Kevin playing that one smart this is still bouncing towards the center can be double cleared away look at the redirect here from Kevin as well but a smart heads up play right there from Stone D and take a look at this now they're bringing in the double touches going with the advanced mechanics here also this cheeky demo in the mid oh my word coming from random shy too just clearing the way for this double touch and that angle i still don't know how taysec was able to touch that that was insane hey, you're talking about the drippiness of the cars how about that goal explosion right there from taysec as well like that it's like a t white or black i can't really tell which one it is and i can't even really tell which goal explosion it is but it still it looks really really good haven't really seen that one in action but the final 18 seconds here Fisher college in complete control four to zero so far here in game number one Iona maybe trying to change the tides of things, maybe get themselves a goal towards the tail end of this ball game. Stone D off the back wall. Here comes Jeremy. Intercepted though. It's gonna be random shy. That's a good shot right there from Taysek. He already has himself his hat trick. All zeros on the clock. We're gonna see if Iona can maybe get something. It's gonna hit the ground instead. And Fisher College hang on and win four to zero. Yeah, game number one going four to zero in the way of Fisher, and I hope this isn't a foreshadowing of how the series could possibly go. I want to see Iona strike back with a vengeance, but with that being said, let's take a look on how the stats tell the tale. As you can see, the shot count is going to go the way of Fisher College coming through with at least 11 shots on the board compared to Iona's five, and then of course, we're going to be taking a look of, you know, at the overall goals, you're going to have four to zero, but let's take a look at the assist. Only two out of those four from Fisher came off the pass play. I find that rather interesting and not only that but just the sheer amount of demolition difference as well you have five demos total right there for fisher only one demo for iona so i mean it, it's a tough ask like i said beforehand to, to compete here with fisher but they do have a chance to kind of do so on top of that um they don't have the starting roster out here so this is why we say that it's doable for iona to kind of get going here but at the same time you have to be more productive on the offensive side uh, you have to be more productive as far as the demo department goes, in my personal opinion, because that's the new meta. A lot of people trying to implement this demolition strategy, open up some of the, uh, the, the, the the passing lanes, the shooting lanes, get some of these defenders off the field so they don't get these, you know, savior medals out here on the pitch. So Iona has to approach this one a lot differently heading into game number two. You're talking about demo being the new meta. New for who? New for who? I was new for all these young cats hey, out here, Cap. Hey, you know, when I you was, look at the hey, D1... I was, Yo, I was demo day one, okay? It's all about the demo or die. That's how it goes down on the pitch. But regardless, we're heading into game number two, and let's see if Iona can bring a little bit more physical play to this series as we are well and underway. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's just a newer uh, meta. A lot of people were kind of shying away from it because sometimes people frown upon demolitions. Not me. I, I personally like them. It definitely gets into the head of the defense. Speaking of getting to the head of the defense, look at Random Shy trying to put that one right past the two defenders that were there almost found pager with it as well but iona is playing that one really really smart and that's a lot of the game knowledge comes into play you can see fisher college they are rotating pretty successfully unfortunately that whiff not very successful tactical of the like but the shot nearly on does get saved and cleared away and you know what uh, you know what this is going to be my hot take of the day okay. and you can at me if you want to demos take skill there i said it yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that one. Demos do take skill. Who else takes skill? Score. Random Shy. Going to score the first goal here for Fisher College. A good read off the back wall. All thanks to the advancement right there from Taysek. He's just going to lay that one up towards the middle of the field. Or towards the middle of the net. My apologies. And then, you know, all it needs is a little tap, tap, tap. We're in there, Kevin. Yeah, and you see that makes sense because Taysek in game number one was able to get the hat trick, got three on the board, got their MVP medal. So now in game number two, they're going to lead it off with the assist. They're going to let their other teammates cook now. It's time for the other teammates on Fisher College to start taking some shots. But at the same time, Iona, they need to get their shot count up as well. Still lots of time to do so. Only down by one goal, almost two goals. Stone D going to keep that one out of the box, out of the net, I should say, as well for Fisher College or for I don't know I was looking at Fisher College trying to do uh, the rotation in the back trying to make sure that they were rotating properly there was gonna be nothing open on the back end Tasek from the corner that was gonna be popped towards random shy that's gonna be one though by Stone D this is a chance right here for Iona to score it's gonna be taken away though by Kevin 
Yeah, that it is. And look at the transition so fast coming from Fisher College as already they were simply on their back foot playing defense and just as quickly they were able to apply the offense and it's those fast break plays coming from Fisher that I think has given them, you know, a couple of goals at least in game number one and maybe here in game two as well. Approaching that halfway point in this ball game. Fisher College has that one goal lead so far. They want to hang on to it. Of course, Iona still struggling to find their first goal of this series. They've been so close, Cap. Every single time they get close, every single time that they have a chance to score it, it just seems like Fisher College is there. Almost right on cue. Stone D is going to put the first one through for Iona. Well, well done, Sir D, but you got to give credit to DJ, who was able to get the pass off the backboard down. And of course, Stone D able to finish it now for the first time in this series. Other than the start, we have a tie ball game. Such a good job right there for Iona. A good another shot. Oh, my goodness. That one was going to go in as well. Taysek keeps it out. This is a 1v1 situation. Taysek going to pop that one off the back wall. Didn't really have many resources to use. Try to advance that one upfield. Just try to put his team in the best possible situation. DJ now the overtake from Stone D at midfield. It's going to be met by Taysek, who has a disgusting redirect upfield to advance that one back towards the orange half. It's so funny the way that, you know, the words that come to mind when I see some of these touches. For example, you know, the double touch that we saw earlier on in game number one, it, it, the word tasty came to mind. Like, that was a tasty touch right there. Speaking of, look at Kevin trying to get their own tasty touches. Now, Taysek will take a turn, and they can't wow. get it to go. DJ, the savior right there for Iona. I believe that's his second huge epic save, in my personal opinion, on the rotation back through. Every single time Fisher College could have probably scored that one, it has been denied courtesy of DJ. One save for Stone D as well, who pops this one towards the middle of the field. That's a good take right there from DJ, but it's going to find its way in. Stone D, the patience pays off right in the middle of the field. Yeah, and for those that are saying that the Dami is dead, I would like to disagree. Look at the power of this flick coming off the hood of the Dominus, able to get not past not one, but two defenders literally in their grill. And now for the first time, Iona have the lead over Fisher College. That was such a good take. It was like a, a complete dead stop with that Dominus right inside that blue box. And then just had enough boost to push that one in. If Iona the first lead here of the series of course it's only game number two though top of that we have 50 seconds left so maybe even a potential series tire as well with that goal clutch situation right there for fisher college they need to get this one in maybe even get the second goal for them and they will what a huge passing play for fisher college and you know uh, uh, feel free to agree to disagree but i feel like the namesake here played off uh, pretty well because that also felt pretty random kevin again so close to getting in the way and getting the save but it just hit off their car into their own net and random shy coming through with somewhat of a random shot off of a double commit wow. to get that one to go and now taysek will find another i can't believe that this just happened right here for fisher college taysek of course being so fast so speedy but off of a kickoff goal like this when iona was just in complete control the whole entire second half of this ball game is just baffling to me. Now Fisher College find themselves up by one goal with short time remaining as well. They need to put this in just cruise control at this point in time. They want to hang on and get this second win here of the series. Well, let's see if they can get it done. Iona already have two on the board. Let's see if they can get one more to try and equalize. Only 20 seconds left to go, and this one is going to go the other way now. Taysek takes control, is able to wave dash to the 100 boost, and now a 50 out from the corner. Going up high, followed up by Jeremy. He's able to put this one back down towards the mid. Kevin takes control. Five seconds to go, and that will be the nail in the coffin as Fisher College will find their fourth goal of game two. Good job by Fisher College. Battling back, keeping this ball away from Iona, and then having themselves two unanswered goals here to finish off this regulation. Of course, something crazy can kind of happen, but I'm a firm believer that they have this one in the bag. Final second sticking away. There goes Taysek off the back wall. That right there should kill it. And Fisher College come back scratching Iona down. What was it? Two goals at one point in time here, Cap. And they, they, they take the lead 4-2 to two, and win the second game.
Yeah, we saw Fisher College really step it up in the second half there. You know, once we got past that two minute and 30 mark, that's when Fisher decided to, you know, step on the gas a little bit more and then really start to bring the heat. Speaking of bringing the heat, how about this? 14 double digit, 14 demolitions coming from Fisher College. Are we sure this is like a, a Fisher College? Because that seems like some shark like behavior, literally eating the opposition in demos. Listen, I just want to point out that you read that wrong. Shot, yes, I read the shots. I just realized I read the shots. My it's mind okay. was seeing what it wanted to see, but still four demos compared to zero demos. That's still a lot of demos. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. That's what we were talking about as well. Iona needed to come back to this game and maybe start to implement a demolition strategy of their own. Obviously, it's working here for Fisher College. That's why, you know, it's kind of interesting to see the scoreline four to two with Iona still for I think a majority of that ball game were in complete control, you know, but for some reason Fisher College just started coming back towards the tail end of that one. I don't think the demolitions really started to matter towards the tail end. I think it was just pretty much added insult to injury. They knew they were going to score, started demoing some people towards the tail end as well. But regardless, they still do hang on and on top of that go up two to zero in the series. Yep, that they do. And you know what? I'm still going to hope for 14 demolitions. Maybe <laughs> combined. Maybe demolitions for Iona compared with Fisher College in this game number three will add up to 14. Who knows? But without further ado, we're already well and underway here into game three in Fisher College take possession. Yeah, this is such a crucial possession in that first opening seconds because you saw Fisher College score off of a kickoff earlier. That was Tasek. So you have to keep your eyes now on to those kickoffs, especially early on in this ball game, you might catch the defense slacking. Luckily enough, Iona does hang on. Here comes Jeremy now from the corner towards midfield. They'll be met by Tasek. Good touch by DJ, gonna be beaten two defenders right there of Fisher College. This is a long shot, has to stretch out for his random shy. He does make contact with it, leaves the net open temporarily. Kevin gonna save that one away. The follow-up touchdown from DJ. That one's a gimme, and the pressure from Iona led to that goal for our, our yeah i'm sorry the pressure from my own has led to that goal oh 100 i mean jeremy leading the way there being able to get that shot on which it was a successful shot on target but it forced a double commit from the defense and cleared the goal there in order for iona to find an opening and get that much needed first goal of game three a little bit of mechanics here for Tasek towards midfield dj with a bar down shot gonna be his second I think that was like 10 or 15 seconds that elapsed. Iona's now up two to zero, only a minute off the clock. Yeah, and what a good cheat up from Sir Stonedy as well, being able to get up there quickly, get that 50-50 to stop Fisher College from taking possession and then putting it back into the middle for again. We got to see DJ find the back of the net, getting an early two goal cushion for Iona. Three minutes and 50 seconds, still a lot of time for Fisher College to come back in this matchup, but. You would have to think that maybe, just maybe, you might be looking towards the next game, but they were down by two beforehand. They could definitely make that comeback happen. Iona knows that. They're trying to put the pressure onto them as well as score maybe another goal. It's a good read right there from DJ with the pre-jump, but gonna ultimately give possession away. Here comes Kevin now, air dribble as the mechanics. Trying to get this one down. Oh my goodness, what a save from Iona. It took two members to keep that one out. Neither one of them were sure if they were going to get it or not. And I don't blame them for double committing to that one. Yeah, I'll be honest. I wasn't sure if they were going to get it or not. But they managed to get another a fantastic save in order to clear it away. And now it's going to go back to the side of Fisher College. And you can see Tasek taking possession and control on the wall. Gets a nice little flick out towards mid. It is taken away once again by DJ. You got to watch out. They are looking for their hat trick here in game three. Two minutes. 45 seconds now. Stone D had possession temporarily. He did still keep this ball over on the orange half. This is a good take right here from Stone D. Oh, Random Shy coming across the net. Saves that one away. Now this is an open opportunity right here for Random Shy. Stone D and him both battling. Just the 1v1 pretty much presenting this up on the field. Going save for save right now. You have to think, can Iona hang on? Can they score one more goal? That would be... A, a good lead for them being up three to zero. Fisher College right now averaging at least four goals a game for Iona in complete control, keeping Fisher at bay. 
Yeah, that they are. And now we are at the two-minute mark. They have done a good job keeping Fisher College scoreless. And now they are trying to add on to their lead and not even settling for that 2-0 lead. They want more as Fisher College have still yet to find their first goal here. Fisher knocking on the door. Stone D. It's this one across, which is a good play. I like that one because typically what happens is a lot of people float that one and turns into like a waterfall pass for the offense. You did see Fisher College lurking towards that center line as well, waiting for that mistake to come out and, and happen. On top of that, they're taking away just a lot of opportunities right here for Fisher College, but you can't have shots like that from Kevin that should have put that one in, but instead floats that one softly, and, and Iona actually had themselves an easy save there. Yeah, but now it's going to go back the other way again, and you can see Fisher College do find an opening, and Tasek will find the first goal here for Fisher in Game 3. Yeah, that's exactly what I was worried about right here as well, is the fact that Fisher College can come back. Only down by one now with still a lot of time, 72 seconds left on that clock. They'll find themselves at match point, maybe even forcing this overtime. Definitely are skilled enough to get this done in regulation. This is going to be a tough read right here from DJ. The follow, not going to find its mark. And demolition coming from Fisher College could result in something. Ultimately, it's going to give them possession as they head back over towards the orange half of the field. Yeah, Iona is going to want to have that last attempt back because with an all rights, that should have been in. You don't miss those. I mean, you're coming off the backboard, off the kickoff. The cheat up was good. Everything was perfect. But then the shot was just a little wide. Not, it wasn't even that far off. It just enough to where it doesn't find the back of the net. Now, what should be a 3-1 to one lead is currently 2-1. to one, As now Iona looking to try and rectify their mistakes. Another missed opportunity right there for I Iona as well. As they beat up the left side post and the right side post as well. Two back-to-back -back misses, I think, for Iona on that offensive possession. But 20 seconds remaining. They're looking pretty decent right now. They need to get this possession back over towards the blue half. They do just that. Stone D at midfield. Jeremy as well. Wasting precious seconds off the clock. Fisher College, they'll have this last ditch effort. There's a good um, interception right there in front of the blue box. DJ, nice pinch pass around. That was going to waterfall towards the blue box. As soon as this one hits the ground, there it is. Iona's going to make their mark here in this series and take their first game under their belt. Well, there you go, and that's really all you need to do. Unfortunately, we didn't get the 14 demos, but three is not bad. Maybe we could use more, but no. In all seriousness, it was a fantastic game. Iona was able to come through, get the win, and for the majority of that game, held Fisher College to zero goals until the last minute. Yeah, it was definitely a different Iona team that we've seen uh, for sure as they come in here with, I think, uh, was that quick math, 12 shots you know, in, in this game alone, I think they didn't even register 12 shots combined with the first and second game here. Yeah, only 10 shots total for the first and second game. So that's the kind of offense we were expecting to kind of see from Iona, as well as the type of pressure that they need to bring if they want to push themselves past Fisher. Yeah, and they were really forcing Fisher to stay inside of their own half for the majority of that match. They had to get a combined seven saves from the side of Fisher College just to keep themselves afloat. So they were so busy playing defense, they didn't have any time to get anything done on offense, which is why their shot count was so limited. And Iona just needs to keep up that pressure. They need to start beating Fisher College at their own game, especially at that midfield line. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. That's what came from a lot of those goals was the fact that they kept so much pressure onto them. They kept Fisher at bay. They kept them forced onto the blue half of the field. And that's what resulted in a lot of goals, especially that opening one in that game number three. If you think all the way back about six minutes ago or so, um, you, you just remember so much pressure that was being generated from Iona. But we're going to hop in to game number four, see if Iona can tie up this series or can Fisher College go on match point. Well, let's get ready to find out. A nice touch down and nearly a shot on coming from random, but it's going to go the other way as DJ gets the perfect pass down to Sir Stone D, and that will be the first goal of game four. Yeah, that's just a huge mistake right there from Fisher College. You see Kevin battling. He knew what was going to happen. DJ, I think, just getting the dunk over top of Kevin, or is he probably going to have that pinch clear up off the ceiling, maybe cleared away from one of his teammates or... Maybe a miss from Iona instead to make Fisher pay with that mistake. 
Yep, that they did. And already you can see this early momentum continuing the build for Iona. This is exactly how the previous game started out. Very quick goal in a matter of seconds off the kickoff. And they were able to ride that momentum to a victory. But now it will be Fisher College to strike back. Yeah, this one comes off of a uh, Iona mistake right here as well. Look at Jeremy just battling with the back wall, battling against Kevin as well. And then Tastex just recognizing that uh, there's a little bit of distress right there on the goal line, putting the pressure on, which results in a goal. And on top of that, the equalizer here in this game number four. So possession going over towards Iona. They need to make something happen with this possession or as Fisher College is going to start to heat up and make them pay. And right now, Fisher College looks like they're heating up in the Iona half. But speaking of, nothing gets a little bit more hotter than that demo there. Jeremy absolutely demolishing their opponent and taking the ball in possession back into Fisher College territory. This one's still keeping possession, though, onto Iona. Like you said beforehand, keeping that midfield control. Look at Kevin going for the musty flick. He fakes it, though, and then pays the ultimate price with his life, though. Defensive Iona says, we'll show you gonna try to fake us out play these mind games out early it says no 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 but there goes kevin trying to pass that one towards mid still keeping possession still has a lot of boost to work with as well but ultimately going to be popped over to the to the side wall and you know i i absolutely love this change of play coming from iona they're bringing a little bit more attitude into game number four because you see fisher college again they're going for the fancy footwork here they're trying to bring in those musty flicks the flip resets the air drags and everything else in iona is going to apply the strategy that you can't do those things if we send you to the scrap heap. Did you say air dragons? Air drags. Oh, I thought you said but air it, dragons. <laughs> I mean, it could be air dragons. I mean, technically, if anybody is an air dragon, it would be Taysac, right? I, I mean, I don't know. What does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know. They strike from the sky and they bring the fire. But speaking of, Iona has brought the fire and has found their second goal here. Yeah, that's, that was a good goal right there. Good take right there from Iona as well. Just a, a, a difficult shot from the side, from the angle that he had. Not always a gimme in that situation. On top of that, usually generally hit too hard. And then, uh, yeah, the, the, the transition here from Fisher. Just I saw it in development. I was still trying to explain what happened with Iona, but Taysek with the one pass. And then on top of that, just a pass easy towards Kevin, towards midfield. Nobody home for Iona. And again, that was just some textbook midfield play right there. They were able to dissect the defense, find that small gap, and then just a simple pass play forward. A three pass, if you will, in order to get that one to go in transition. And they found the back of the net. So again, good on Fisher College being able to equalize. Approaching the halfway point here in game number four. It's good advancement right there for Iona. Trying to take this lead right back from Fisher College. They desperately need it. They want to tie up this series. We talk about the mental game. Cap, you've been playing this game for such a long time. Talk Too about, long. oh my goodness. Talk about this dunk. Talk about this double tap off the back wall. Uh, this is the point where I forfeit. That's what that is. Like, if I get dunked like this and someone serves up my lunch to me in that regard, I'm sorry. I'm throwing up the FF. You know what? That's it. I'm, I'm retiring, hanging up the controller, hanging up the sticks. But Fisher College are able to take that one goal lead over Iona with just over two minutes left to go. Yeah, you're, you're on someone's highlight reel at that point in time. That's going right on Twitter, TikTok, wherever it may be. It's, it's going somewhere for sure. But I was going to say, Cap, talk to us about the, uh, the, the the mental game. Being on match point, if Fisher College does manage to win this ball game, being on that match point, what, what is uh, what is an entitle for Fisher College and Iona? And you see that that is, uh, I think, is probably the most underrated factor in esports in general, not just Rocket League, is the mental wear and tear, the fatigue and the stamina that it actually takes to compete at this type of level. Think of it. We're even in a, in a best of seven now, which is, you know, a, of course, going to be more games than our usual best of fives. But the reason we play in such long gated series, especially when a lot is on the line, is because endurance, stamina, those all need to be tested when you're playing in esports. And especially in Rocket League, it, it, it can be so mentally draining that you could pop off for the first game and the second game and even the third game but can you do it again can you do it five times can you do it ten times Ooh. you have got to be consistent and that is where your true medal is tested as an esports player yeah it's been time and time again where we count uh, we, we see reverse sweeps happening because a team would go up in the series and all of a sudden 
you know, that they lack that mental capacity or the endurance, you know, and uh, basically it, it starts to break down. The other team starts to figure out what's going on in the pitch. They, they start to change up their offense, change up their defense, whatever it may be, and approach the game differently. And that's why I like best of seven series so much. Time and time again, we see a best of three and you know, whoever wins that first game pretty much goes right onto that match point. And it affects that mental of the team. Speaking of affecting the mental, look at the mental play right here from Kevin. And again, first of all, the, the air drag from the air dragon Taysek, first of all, <laughs> to get the pass off is one thing. That was already impressive. But then here comes Kevin out of nowhere, getting that redirect off the backboard and putting it down and in. The shot placement was just chef's kiss oh so good and now fisher college get to enjoy the comforts of a two goal cushion i, I don't think it's gonna stick i don't think the air drag your air dragon's gonna stick i thought you were gonna try to talk about like dueling dragons like somebody had the goal explosion dueling dragons or something but look at the flick let's check out taste sex goal explosion as well that's gonna be the third unanswered goal here for fisher college only 22 seconds left that's just Finnick finesse right there. That's all that is. I mean, that's a that's a solid flick. Nothing going off the backboard. No flippery do not fill it flippery set. No musty crusty flicks either. Just a good old fashioned off the hood flick again. That that Finnick doing what it's meant to do. The final seconds are upon us here. Oh my word! And another goal is upon us here as well. Kevin going to score four unanswered goals now for Fisher College. Absolutely. Just disgusting individual play right in the faces of Iona's defense. Yeah, and then nothing was random about that pass coming from Random Shy. I mean, they literally led the way all the way down into enemy territory, into the range of the goal. And then Kevin was just, just again, tap, tap, tap it in to find the sixth goal in game five. In, or I'm sorry, game four in favor of Fisher College. All zeros on the clock. Iona just wants this one to hit the ground and get this one over with please kevin says no man, i want another one that's please, rule let me zero. Get another one you gotta respect rule zero. <laughs> oh no i mean rule let's get out of here let's get out of this ball game nah. but i want to point out <laughs> i want to point out i mean i mean i agree with you there, there is the rule zero there is an effect but at the same time i mean it's it's for what what is it for what is rule one for <laughs> I guess you're right. I guess I was you're say, right. There's yeah. no logic in what these. What are the rules for? Exactly. These, I mean, these aren't contractually obligating, but, you know, we do them anyway. Stop trying to break the fourth wall. We don't ask those questions. We just do them. So saith Rocket League Proverbs, uh, verse 23, line 42. I don't know. I'm, I just made that up. But <laughs> what I'm not making up is this uh, demo count right here. I mean, uh, right now, Fisher only had one demo, and we're seeing four coming from Iona. And yet Fisher College still managed to take four goals over Iona. Don't get me wrong. The demo meta is still technically meta, but, you know, you can't put all your bread in that basket. Yeah, I want to point out as well, four goals for Kevin in that ball game. He has himself a hat trick as well. And off of 10 shots for Fisher um, is just insane in comparison from last game to this one. Iona definitely not playing up to what they were playing in that last game in game number three. Um just kind of let that ball game slip away from them. I think they were actually up like, I think two to zero, two to one at one point in time. And then four unanswered goals for Fisher really just kind of just put the ice on the cake for them. And, you know, they, they dug their own grave is what I'm trying to say here, Cap. Yeah, and you know, it could be the start of that mental fatigue like we were talking about. You know, we're well now uh, into the series, starting off in game number five. And I'll be honest, after just like maybe two games, I'm pretty spent. So I can only imagine how these players are feeling right now. And you know, maybe it's it's part of that endurance that is really starting to be tested here in this series. And unfortunately for Iona, they're falling just a wee short, but they're able to find a resurgence here in game five by getting the first goal. Yeah, we have seen time and time again, Iona just hopping up, getting the, getting the lead early. So it takes a little bit for Fisher to kind of get going, but Iona ultimately start to uh, get too comfortable out here on the pitch. And Fisher College, that's when they sneak their way back through starts to score some of these uh some of these goals to get themselves the lead but match point here for fisher hopping into game number five i don't know though starting off really really well yeah that they are and they're showing a little bit more control here as that one does drop down 50 it out back towards the mid but stone d is there is going to give possession away to tasek who does get the flick but that's an easy save coming from dj and now you can see fisher college trying to keep the likes of iona in their own half but finally they break free Here comes Taysek off the back wall. 
showing off some of his mechanics as well. I like... I just wish I could do, do some of these mechanics here, Captain, because uh, I, I tell you what, man, they, they make it look so easy out here. I, it's not. It really, really isn't. Tasek just came off that back wall with ease, had the air dribble, used all his boosts to advance that one towards the orange half, and they've been here ever since. Yeah, I'll be honest. There was a point in time way back when, when I had hair, that I could do these mechanics. Not anymore. I'm, I'm pretty washed. I'm about as washed as a Maytag, but... It, it really is something to be able to do these types of mechanics consistently. I remember when I was in my competitive days, I would spend an hour every day doing training packs and free play before I would even jump into a match or ranked. Yeah, not me. I don't have the dedication like that. I just uh, kind of just hop into a 3v3 and just cross my fingers at that point in time. I'm better at casting. I'm going to stick with casting. <laughs> me too. That's why I retired. <laughs> Both of us just washed before we even peaked, am I right? But oh, 100%. <laughs> here comes another attack right here from Fisher College, trying to equalize this score line. Zero to one still is Iona. That's back over towards the blue half of the field. And that's that Dominus power right there. Some of the magic being worked from Stone D. Not going to be enough magic, though. Here comes Random. Shy going to have a shot. That was going to ring off the right side post. Not going to find its way in. Taysex still keeping the play, the play alive. Kevin. Off the back wall. This is a floater. Can someone get this one away from the net? Thank you. But still, keeping the pressure on is random shy. Yeah, and you can see Fisher College. They're stepping up their aggression here, trying to find this equalizer. And the passes are there, but it just feels as though the communication may be a bit off right now for Fisher. Top of that. They're starting to wake up, get hot. We were talking about that. Iona does such a good job at scoring that first goal. And usually, that's... Uh, that leads to a couple of other goals. It adds to the mental of Iona because right now they're facing, like I said, elimination. They're about to lose this series. So having that first goal in your pocket is definitely huge. Look at Stone D. Oh my goodness. Everybody has to hustle back right there for Fisher College, and they do just that. Keeping that second goal out for Iona. For under two minutes to go. Can they hang on much longer? I mean, they don't have much longer in this match to go. Just a minute and 45 and Iona will be able to take this game one to nail. And if anything, they should be looking out to try and find that two-goal cushion just in case. You always want to have that extra insurance goal, especially yeah. against a team like Fisher. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. That Maybe even two more insurance goals because we've Couldn't seen hurt. what Fisher College can do. They can come back from two goals. They scored four unanswered goals. Now they're knocking on the door, but luckily for Iona, they did manage to control the resources on their half of the field. There's a good shot right here from Tay Sack. It's going to be a fake going from ground to air. He's going to advance this one towards the middle of the field, maybe going for a bump play. I do like the decision making right there from Tay Sack, but the execution was not there for Fisher College. No, it was not. Now they're trying desperately. You can see they're starting to throw everything at the wall now to hope that something will stick as they are just taking shot after shot. But the relentless defense coming from Iona is constantly denying any offensive aggression coming from Fisher College. And now the ball is heading the other way. Random shy. Advancement. Trying to get the second goal. Trying to force this overtime. I mean, this first goal, my apologies. Trying to force this overtime. Stone D and company from Iona, who did such a good job at denying Fisher College, who has just been red hot the last four or five games on offense. And maybe they're starting to figure out what's going on out here. Final 20 seconds in the ballgame. Taysek, good pass over to Kevin. Kevin off the ceiling, potentially. Random shy has to make a play. Taysek was waiting. Can he get the goal? He does. There's the tie right there. And we were talking about it so much, Captain, how Fisher College has the capabilities to come back. There's the equalizer. That doesn't happen any other way, without a doubt. Unless you play that exactly, that that doesn't happen. You don't equalize. That was a three-way pass play. The first, of course, being able to beat out the defender just to get the backboard pass. And then, of course, the touchdown just to get that bounce shot pass. Not one, but two defenders. The shot placement was just perfect, and it needed to be perfect. And now, for the first time in the series, we have overtime. Yeah, on top of that four-way pass and play. I would say Jeremy trying to go back door. That one is shut in his face, though. But this is what Iona is so good at. The beginning parts of games, they put so much pressure onto Fisher College, and they usually get some results from it. Random shy. Hit that one towards midfield. Taysek now with the overtake. Stone D in the face of Taysek. Taysek has to be smart. Little resources to work with. 
He's gonna be met by Jeremy in the air. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, you know, overtime to me is just a completely different ball game. Some teams just pop off an OT, wow. And, wow, and other teams just don't. But right now, both sides are popping off, and I think overtime play really is that X factor. Again, some teams can do it, and some teams simply can't. That's yeah, definitely starting to wear on the mental of both of these teams. We're talking about the endurance heading into this ball game. I'm concerned about the endurance here of Iona. Two defenders keeping that one out. In the 1v2 situation was Taysek who played that one so smart. Now he needs, needs some resources. Maybe even, I was going to say, maybe that 100 pad was going to spawn for him in the top left-hand corner, or maybe at midfield, but nothing ever came. Kevin, air dribble. You know, win that 50-50. Still going to keep uh, pressure onto Iona's defense. Jeremy with a backflip, keeping that one out, but still keeping Fisher College at bay. And honestly, these players are just so extraordinary in what they are capable of is again the pass play is there and just rings off the sidebar so close. And look at this, you have all three players now on the counterattack from Iona, and they get deflected. And now Fisher College barely hold on. That was a very dangerous attack from Iona. Yeah, on top of that, I mean they had the chance to uh, to, to do it. They had the chance. Wow. Had. Random shy. Yeah had past tense the chance no more chances here that is just gonna about do it as random shy able to find the read off the backboard from Taysek in order to get the dub here in ot and to get the win in the series yeah that was such a good finish right there from fisher ultimately like i said iona just way too many mistakes way too many missed opportunities as well fisher just so much pressure in that overtime matchup kept iona on their defensive half for a majority of that game so unfortunate right there for Iona, but irregardless of who won this matchup, both teams, like I said beforehand, capped are going to be in Arlington battling it out for the CECC. Yeah, and don't be surprised if that when they go to land that this series, if they meet up again, is going to be a lot closer. Just because we have seen how Iona was steadily and surely able to make that comeback. And then still, even in Game 5, they took it to OT, they spent a good time in extra minutes, and they literally just held Fisher College to a one-goal game. So they are literally improving in real time, and I can only see them improving further as we move on and they move on to Arlington. Not only that, but not the starting roster there for Fisher either. So very, very impressive by, I'd say, the quote-unquote substitutes, backups, whatever you want to call them. So very, very impressive performance right there for Fisher College coming through and winning this title here in the ECAC Rocket League Finals. So congratulations to Fisher College. I think we do have an interview coming up after this break. So we'll be right back with some more Rocket League. way mineral area wearing hoodies even though it is 75 degrees outside here in atlanta georgia absolute legends if only nick could hear you nick come back if he's over 100 feet away he can't and you were whispering something and he started smiling i'm like are you whispering oh yeah because he's got his he's got his headphone in if we're close enough but bless you he's in tight he's in tight again you're welcome right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go find him oh oh there he is Oh my! Oh, okay, okay. Real, real stuff is starting. Real stuff. Competitive integrity needs to be upheld. We gotta get out of here. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm really. I, I get really embarrassed when I get yelled at. Thirty is already. Okay. Wow, it's not 10:30 yet. It's only like barely 10. <laughs> Woo! All right, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a long. Hey, what's up? Surprise interview. Join me over here. This we have a cool backdrop. What are we here for? Rocket League. Awesome. I'm not going to ask what school you go to because unless you swap hoodies, that seems pretty clear. No, nope. you know, I've got, I got my jersey on with my name on it. Oh, you do? We show us your jersey. Look at John T. Turbo here. Yeah, exactly. That's not his name. I just keep calling him that. Yeah. His name is John, but it's... My name is John Turbesi. Yeah, that's not John T. Turbo. Yeah, I get the message that I'm going to Nebraska where I met you. Oh, <laughs> that's so crazy. So context, if we're probably never going to use this, but I want to talk about it. Turbo and I met at a LAN like over a year ago. That's so Not great. Over. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. I am Septimus, joined by a man I have interviewed probably well over 10 times. It's going to be my good friend, Neb, here from Bay State Overwatch team. Neb looked at me and before he started his last series, and he said, we are not dropping a map for the rest of the day. And so far, he has lived up to that title. But Neb, is there anybody you're thinking, we've got to get them out of the way. We've got to take them down. Uh, no. No? Just looking at it, each fights its own, every game. Going into it, just taking it as it comes? 
uh, I have the confidence right now that we're not going to drop a single map. I, I love Neb because he not only is he confident, but he's correct. Bay State is one of the best Overwatch teams I've ever seen. So it's it's always good to hear from. I love the confidence and I love Bay State. So I hope they do a great job this weekend. So what qualifier? Did you win a qualifier to get here? At large bid. We're looking at Rocket League. We're thinking high odds, low odds. What do, where do we think we're walking away? I think I think pretty high. I think we're we're doing pretty good. Is there anybody that you're looking at? You're like, please do not let us go up against them unless we absolutely have to. I mean, really, everybody's good competition. So. Definitely. And sorry, what was your name? Ethan. Ethan. Ethan from Mineral Area. Yep. Very exciting. Well, Ethan, good luck. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Please. What kind of pass? A player pass? Let me get you on your No, you actually have to like tape it to your chest, like really awkwardly with masking tape. Okay. And it's going to fall off. Yeah. It's going it's to be uncomfortable, I promise. That's a guarantee. Okay, cut that. I'm going to sneeze. Okay, great. I'm great. Everything's good. Who do we interview? Who should we interview? I don't know. I'm just here. I need caffeine. What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the ECAC Top Plays of the Week. I am Seth Dillens, and I'm super excited to walk through these with you so you can see all of the great moments we are getting out of collegiate esports. One of my favorite things about these seasons is as they go on, as the years continue to pass, the skill ceiling just gets higher and higher, and the teams get better and better. Starting things off in Week 1 and 2, these teams came out the gate swinging. Let's take a look at what they were ready to bring out in these early weeks. Valorant is a game all about risk versus reward, and Sin from NYIT wanted to show us just how much he was willing to risk to get that great reward of a round win. Sort of force to pop off, maybe get a little bit more sniper play, but these direct tight angles make it tough. You have Axorus that actually gets a wall bang headshot onto Prime. That oh, that timing on the paranoia works so well. One enemy remaining. Yo, give it, give it up for the util, bro. Sin's gonna pick up three into the site. The lurk on its way from the chamber, but unless you're going to spam through this box, you're not getting anything done, and Panda won't even let him get that far. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is a game that can be decided in milliseconds, and Waka, one of the best players from SUNY Canton A Squad, wanted to show us just what they can do with only a second and a single stock on the board. Lucina, Sledge option going to be charging for Smash going a little early. They're not quite getting what you want. Drop shield after first hit, a pick, getting hit by the kick. High percent. There is the stun into Claw. That clock oh. has been charged for a lot longer. Oh, oh my goodness, that's a forwarder into stage with the stage bike and then upping immediately after. What a sick. One point in Rocket League can never make a team feel comfortable, but Driftsy wanted to show us that not only was he going to pick the pace up, but he wasn't going to let his team down. Defensive test with flying colors, though they couldn't get out. And that is the important part at the moment. Clears a must for UA, and it's just not in the cards at the moment. Dripsy, oh. Dripsy connects off the backboard. What a shot. I watched it unfold slowly. He stopped speaking at just the right moment. Valorant is often called a team-based shooter, but sometimes it can't just be about the team. Sometimes you've got to have those hero plays. Spec wanted to spray and pray and was actually able to save the day for SVSU, tying up the series 7-7. Seven to seven. Yeah, hard B push here, two omens folks coming out. One, oh, Spec oh, just fights three. What? Spray through the smoke? Oh, one Spec, that's not legal, man. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the ECAC Esports channel. My name is Whoopshu. Joining alongside of me is Captain at Soka. And if you guys stuck with us through that break, first and foremost, thank you very much. But you guys uh, watched the Spring Division A Championship, Fisher taking on um, uh, Iona, and Fisher dominating in that performance, winning ultimately the series 4-1. to one. So with us from Fisher College, we have Kevin who's going to be joining us via Discord. No camera for Kevin, so sad faces in the chat for that one. But Captain, uh, absolutely dominating performance right here for Fisher College. And uh, Kevin, first question is going to come from me. You know, what was it like, you know, prepping for this matchup and, uh, you know, pretty much just um, coming into this ball game here? Yeah, you know, we already knew that Iona was like a pretty good team. Uh, we had played them last semester with a, a different third. So we just kind of came into this. We looked at our VODs with Iona. Uh, we were like, you know, we know what they're going to do. Or we can kind of preempt what they're going to do. So we mm -hmm. just kind of played our game. We uh, 
we just kind of worked really well together, and I have no one else to thank but my two teammates, Random and Tasek. Yeah, and you know what? I well, we even talked about this like live during the during the matches. You know, we were talking about like some of the prep work that really has to go into it. And you know, I gotta ask: when you guys go into your like training regimens, do y'all spend time in the training packs and the free plays? Is there any type of like drills that you have to run, or do y'all just grind? You know, matches, scrims, etc. Like, what 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 does it take to be as good as Fisher College? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question because I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's mostly just, uh, our our ups usually just consist of a lot of free play and certain training packs and like ball chasing or not ball chasing maps, but like <laughs> the custom maps. So I spend a lot of time in like rings and like hornet's nest. I know Tasek spends a lot of time in a lot of shooting packs, so it, it's obviously translating to his shooting in game. Oh, 100%. We've seen some nutty shots back to back. So again, I have to ask, you know, going into this one, uh, at least we've seen some impressive shots. Uh, and with that being said, I want to ask, who do you think is the striker coming from your lineup over there at Fisher College? Uh, it's got to be Tasek. The guy is just too consistent. He hits the ball too hard. And right now it's a little scary because the guy just switched over to a Fennec and the PS5 controller. So right now he's very uncomfortable and I'm a little scared to find out what his shooting is going to be like whenever he does get comfortable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's wild. We were talking about that too. Uh, a majority of people, I feel like in the, in, in the rocket league comp scene, switching over from the octane to the Fennec, it's just, uh, I, I don't know the reason why, maybe you can explain to us a little bit more of the reasoning for it, but I think ultimately there's a lot more 50 fifties that are one in the Fennec and uh, just just the sheer amount of car control, I think, in general. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could all just be stigma. Because at the end of the day, the Fennec and the Octane have the same hitbox. But I don't know. To tell you personally, I feel like I have a lot more control in the Fennec. And my 50s are better just because I feel bigger. So that's kind of my answer for it. Well, Kevin, thank you very, very much for being here with us. Me and Captain showing off our controllers pretty much uh, on stream. He has a PS5. <laughs> I have a PS4 one. I'm, I'm on cooler. team. What? Mine looks mine cool. Is, it's mine white, is like, it's Arctic mine white, is bro. like red, magenta-ish. Mine is beautiful. Anyway, Dual Shock <laughs> 5 over the 4 is when it comes to Rocket League. That's the team I'm on right there, okay? Hey, this is all I have to say, okay? White perpetuals for the win, okay, is all I have to say. Anyway, Kevin, the mic is yours. Uh, who do you want to shout out? Who do you want to thank? And uh, I guess uh, leading out, you know, the future here for Fisher College. Any, any final thoughts on that? Uh. Yeah, I just kind of want to thank my two teammates, Tay Second Random. They put on a great performance, and, you know, it's been a pleasure teaming with them uh, in ECAC, as well as our directors for all the support that they give us and just in the program in general, as well as uh, a special shout-out to Parker here on the couch who's been coaching me throughout the series. <laughs> so, you know, that's great. Parker, wipe those chips off of your shirt. We can see them from over here. We appreciate you so very, very much, Kevin. Good luck over in Arlington as well. Thank you guys very, very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Well, Cap, that's going to do it here for us in the ECAC. Fisher College with a dominating performance over Iona Rocket League. And I'm excited to see the rematch potentially at LAN. And, you know, because a lot of players uh, play differently at LAN and such. But, unfortunately, I'm not going to be there. You're not going to be there to see that action happen. So, you guys have to watch it here on the Twitch channel and watch all the action. But if you guys want to have it live, you go ahead and go to Arlington, Texas, May 6th, May 7th. You can be there in person. Or if you want some more information please by all means go to collegiate smg.com to find out some more information fisher's going to be there iona's going to be there a ton of other teams are going to be there as well for rocket league cap any final thoughts any final words or anything else under the sun only thing that i have to say is that it has been a pleasure because some that may not know this was actually my debut season here on the ecac esports you etc etc and it has been a, a true pleasure to be able to be on this platform and share the desk with you of course so again i'm just very happy and very fortunate to have the opportunity to be here i appreciate that cap we'd love to have you here as well and i'm whoops you thank you guys very very much for being here up next though we have a lot more action for you guys it's not gonna be rocket league related it's gonna be overwatch and that's the ecac overwatch 2 finals that's also going to be fisher college taking on ball state and of course, Septalian is going to be bringing you that action with Twin Salty. So don't go anywhere if you guys want to watch some Overwatch 2 action. Stay right here with us through the break. Thank you. All the shots. Oh, a sniper! Jackie Boone from about midway through. What a shot right here from Jackie. 
Wow, good eye sniper. Yes, sir. Jackie Moon puts this on the right side. A little bit more to the left. This one would have been... Here in this clip, we're going to get a great moment from a Pac-Man. And as a Pac-Man player, I was super excited to see it. We're going to hear a lot of praise from our commentators giving Mosey those compliments of choosing Snake against Pac-Man. A great counter pick. They were super excited to see a snake on the field. But even without their blessing, Trollery does not yield. Approach, but like you said, he's trying to play the safe because losing a stock right now for Concord would be really bad. Oh, and, well, no! a little bit of commentators curse there. We kind of will that one into existence. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. No! What? Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, Septilence, how could that be all we got from weeks number one and two? Please tell me there's more. If you like what you saw, you've got to go check out ECAC Esports on all social media platforms. Please see what they're bringing to the table. It is great collegiate esports week after week on the bright side, folks. This is just the beginning. We've got the whole rest of what is guaranteed to be a great season ahead of us. Thank you so much for joining me for this recap, and I'll see you on the next one. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win your life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, with the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big steps. That we don't have these preconceived notions and, and we're, we're willing to listen to our membership and and read the room read read college athletics and and how it's connected and how it's not and and take what what we have expertise in in championships and but also throw out some of the other stuff i remember when we first started there were some, some conferences were applying their amateurism rules to all of their esports competitors and 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 i think we knew enough to know that no, no, that's not going to work in an esports culture. It's got to be very different. And by the way, the NCAA was going in a different direction. You could see the train had already left the station on that. And and so it's it's a it's an incredibly dynamic area and ever changing, and will continue to change. And just as we didn't know when we started what it's going to be looking like, I, I think similarly we don't we still don't know what it's going to be in another five years. I think we I know enough to know that all of us are still going to have a thriving esports program that's that's doing a real good service for our members and for our competitors uh, but we still don't know necessarily what some of that is going to look like and that's pretty cool about it all um let me ask you this because um you so you all are used to you know dealing with your athletic directors and 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 each of them are dealing with what's in front of them in their athletic departments um, my guess is at least some of your schools are th that this is not necessarily operating within the athletic department. And can you tell, can you talk about how you navigate that in a conference office um, and, 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 you know, maybe th the best way to handle that, or do you have preferences? Do you try to steer them one way or the other? Um, and, and just, just talk a little bit about that if you don't mind. Sure. Um, the majority of our schools are not under the athletics umbrella. We have one institution that um, perhaps by next year will be under the auspices of athletics, but most of them are in other departments across campus. Um, right. One of the things that has helped us is that we have support from the president's office. And so in order to participate in Mountain West events, you have to have an adult non-student administrator that oversees that, you know, the esport yep. program. And that's where we get assistance with, you know, eligibility checks and, um, you know, what, please complete your roster, things like that. Um, We're at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. Let's make some noise. Oh, and it's going to be what? The corner judge is good for one, two, ten. He needs more. In the They're doing even more here. You've got to touch the point. Mr. Collins.
Alex walks it in! Joy Boy, just gonna drop. Knife him. Right out front. Yeah, three, oh, two, one. Is running. absolute banger of an evening it is your favorite boys on the mic septilins and twin salty we are jumping into a best of seven series between fisher college and ball state salty two of the strongest teams both making it to this grand final yes and two teams who have already clinched their ticket into cec arlington as well That's true going into this under traditional circumstances it would be the winner of this game goes to arlington but because fisher t <laughs> fisher qualified in a different qualifier ball state technically clinches the ECAC bid, but obviously yeah. both teams still want to take home the ECAC title. Yeah, there's there's a bragging rights thing, a right? Lot of like to say rights. you've won the ECAC, I think you get a separate award for winning the ECAC. So like there are very much still stakes here. You are looking to win this conference one way or another. And this is a reminder, a best of seven, which we do not often see in Overwatch. We are guaranteed at least, at most, like eight or nine if people draw but hopefully we do not get nine maps in a row it is already 9 p.m on the east coast i do not want to uh keep things going when we have to but jumping into this one i know that ball state i, I think is a statistical underdog right they are a team looking into this and knowing going up against the behemoth known as fisher college is not going to be an easy task yeah it's going to be a tough night for them if they can't figure it out pretty quickly because especially fisher is a team once they get going they are just full steam ahead they will not care and they will just continue moving through their roster tonight is ridiculous they pulled no punches yeah. on who they're starting so ball state need to find a very quick adaptation or run something immediately that is throwing fisher off somehow to at least give them some sort of an edge without a doubt we did get confirmation thanks to our great producer Layton there in the back line that first place receives a trophy an mvp trophy and medals while second and third place receive a trophy and medals of course respectfully in first second or third place so there is a lot to fight for here in this ecac grand final overwatch map number one i don't know if we actually have been told it's what it antarctic is peninsula i believe um which is a little weird because it's not a map people scream a lot it is not about people know a lot, including you and I. Uh, so this should be uh, quite <laughs> interesting map one. I, I say this with all the love in the world, Southie. This is one of those maps that I feel like they made for PvE. And then they were like, okay, oh, how do we get it in the game right now? Thousand percent. Let's just try to turn it into a control point. Because like the map is beautiful. And it's super cool. And there's so many like unique things that you don't see on a lot of other control maps. There's like several approaches to point. And there's a lot that is good about the map. Unfortunately, one of the things not so good about the map is the location of the control points. They're very like choked up, they're very close quarters, and they're very difficult to work with. So hopefully these teams have, like you mentioned, some unconventional or more unique team compositions. I don't know if Life Weaver is allowed to be played, but I, I kind of hope he is because I, I do think, well, he's not the greatest healer, he's a pretty interesting support. Yeah, I don't believe he is, I think. Um, uh, Prod Layton can uh, confirm with us here, but ah, I yeah, I rats. believe yeah, no, he's not in. But I, we'll see. If, I think he's in for Arlington, though. I don't know. We'll get confirmation. I hope. Well. No, but I believe he's available for Arlington. Do not quote me on that. All right, he's, I'm he's an a neat little dude, man. Yeah, I, I like him. He's a neat little dude. Yeah, we we are only behind the mic. We don't know any logistics. We don't know any game organizing anything. We just talk about the game in front of us and hope yep. that cool characters like Life Weaver are going to be viable by the time we get to Arlington and both these teams having secured that slot already. You could almost look at this as a bit of a, a warm up, right? I mean, you've made it already. You can kind of get a little bit of information on your opponent and guarantee what compositions they might be playing and what kind of place now they want to bring to the table. I think Ball State does have a really cool opportunity here that win or lose, they have forced out Fisher's most likely Arlington roster. They're getting a lot of information when they're playing this core fight here at the ECA. Yeah, they get a lot of information for themselves that they can provide to you, but also for any other Overwatch team going into them. They can exactly. get a fresh film on Fisher. So you can tell, you can flip that around and be like, hey, Fisher can play a top team who will be at the land and they can maybe learn a few things about themselves that they maybe haven't seen yet. 
And already Manway is going to be bringing that Romatra to the table. This is actually a complete and total mirror matchup, except Abs on the Ana, and Abs staple has made that Ana work in and out of meta. But Spencer going to the more reliable meta pick known as that Baptiste Immortality Field, the most hated yet most powerful ability in the entire great game. A great wall up from Keller there to separate that Romatra. The nade goes out. Manway has to shield block to get back to the team. And already a full minute into this engagement, nobody has capped this point. Yeah, it's just the constant poke, and at least now Fisher has dropped. Wall goes down, and it'll force out the remaining Holy of the shot. nemesis from Avani. NCF with a phenomenal shot there out of the headshot, but unfortunately just cannot get the lineup. Trying to chase Neb out, but Abs finds that first blood. Yakes are not far behind, and already this fight has been turned in favor of Fisher College by only one elimination. Now it'll be two. Avani using those big metal fists to make a message sent, and by golly, has it been Ninja Curly Fry finding a 2k, but unfortunately the rest of the team just not able to stay apart. I really want to see how this Ana versus Baptiste difference were kind of be different here for Fisher because sure. if, if they can play around those bio nades, that's huge for them. We saw at that fight even, you know, the bio on demand, we early forced the nemesis form, made them retreat, and that could be a huge way for Fisher to just hold on to this position. Absolutely, holding on to this position is, is going to be pivotal. And like you said, the nano boost online, the purple hug just around the corner. So maybe a ROM on a combo. There's a nano actually without an annihilation, perhaps in an effort to farm it. A blizzard comes out, I believe. No, okay. Not sure why I just heard that voice line, but the beat drop from Neb does keep the majority of Fisher upstanding. Spencer and Ninja Curly Fry have already fallen. Avani looking for that three piece, but they can barely find someone to shoot at as Forgotten is tearing this team apart. The Forgotten 3K to seal the deal against Ball State using three ultimates, two left standing. Salty, what ults are we looking at from? either side try and stabilize this upcoming combat well i'll say for fisher you need to count a lot in this blizzard because as you said yes you use three ultimates during that fight you can't ghost and you can't see ghost may also have that blizzard online as well so maybe it might just be a stallmate which might actually go in the favor of ball state with that sound barrier only 10 percent yeah. to full yeah, Neb using the Sound Barrier in that last engagement was a little unusual to me. I didn't necessarily hate it, but I found it to be used a little preemptively. Not like they're going to need it in this fight, though, as this fight's already come to a close. No ultimates used from the side of Ball State, and now it's going to be Ninja Curly Fry biting the dust. Oh, I'm sorry, an Ambatrix was popped somewhere. I didn't even hear it go off, but unfortunately, it is not going to get the value they're looking for. 10% found in Fisher College. Only a Blizzard going into this next fight. And maybe a Nano from Abs. They've been building it up ridiculously fast in these engagements. But Ball State, you just can't, you gotta avoid this opening pick. Forgotten yep. has found one almost every single fight so far, and you gotta avoid that if you can try and at least start flipping this around. You can't see Ghost puts up the wall. There's nobody there to eat it. There should be at least a single freeze. I can't believe Avani makes it out of the way in time. Keller's Blizzard is gonna be twice as valuable here as it's no longer that Venn diagram. Avani has fallen. The Nano comes out most likely onto Keller, who has that Blizzard in the pocket. Vortex tries to get Forgotten down into the equation, but Ninja Curly Fry into the back line, finding a 2k. Neb, the last one standing deep in the enemy lines, and will go down as well. Ball State University Red, they've done it. They have capped point, but they need to use everything they had and more. Yeah, the only bright spot is you hold on to the Annihilation from Manry, right. so you have that for this next fight. Forgotten wants you go on to the Widowmaker oh. to try and get even more opening pickoffs, and it might catch Ball State by surprise if they don't call it out early. Yeah, the Widowmaker could be fascinating if they don't gather the information that she's over there. Ninja Curly Fry has the dragons. Probably going to try to pop them in a panic here as the Purple Hug comes out and does a lot of damage. Oh, you blink and you miss it. Two members down. Perhaps a bit of an overextension from Ball State, but they are going to be annihilated by the Annihilation. Poor man, we the last member left standing. Just can't get out of the way in time. And that might be a team kill for Avani. I, it might be, honestly. Able I to, think it was. I think it was. The Annihilation plus the extra pummel. Later on in Fisher, the Falcons already soaring, as that was that was a pretty clean round, Matt. I won't lie. I have to agree there. I mean, that was a very clean performance from Fisher College. The Widowmaker was weird, but clearly they didn't need it, right? They had that Annihilation online. It drops all five members of Ball State University. And going into this next combat, this next site, my personal favorite of the three, which to be honest is a low bar, but I would like to see a couple composition changes here, at least from Ball State. Avani is going to be jumping around a little bit as Fisher decides what they want to do, but Ball State University, it, it did feel like they lost the Romatra combat a little bit. I'd like to see maybe a, a more comfortable tank. I think Reinhardt can work very well into a Romatra if played correctly. I don't know Manway's experience with Rhine, though. I don't know if this is their best tank to work with. Yeah, and honestly, might just be the safest pick. Even sure. though with Junker Queen on the other side as well, it may actually go a little bit more in their favor than they expected. 
Yeah, I think you bring up a great point here. Already, you can't see Ghost, though, is going to be taking out Neb onto Brigida, who, fun fact, win rate has not changed at all since her ultimate was. So it's a fascinating um, compositional change from Fisher College to bring out that Brigida. Looks like it may not be working as well as they wanted it to. Ivani, last member standing, will be the last one to join them back in that spawn room. And Ball State University Red does cap point. First point. Fisher need to play extremely fast to make this comp work. 100%. Because you do not have the sustain with Brig Lucio heals, but you do have that very quick fire damage with Avani, with uh, and their ability as well, just to make sure, hey, you get the extra health. You get that extra speed to get in there with the uh, amp as well from abs. So very quick fights here for Fisher. Could help, except Forgotten may just chill in the back. Yeah, Forgotten being able to stand in the back with that bam. I mean, these arrows notorious for having the hitbox radius of a log, right? That's gonna be You Can't See Ghost that goes down first. Abs is traded though, losing a Lucio, critically more important. Ninja Curly Fries 2k makes it a lot easier for Ball State to continue this rampage against their opponents. And CF will be taken down by that Chunker Queen and now Fisher College, finding themselves at a two numbers disadvantage, but possibly a stabilizable fight if they play their cards right. Man, we deep into the back line. And I'm just not sure that was the proper call. I think they're gonna give their life for it. They might. They don't have the Nemesis form. That's a get healed up though for Mammy now. They have the Annihilation and they pop it right away. Annihilation online. It is going to restore those shields. A Rampage from Avani gets them back up to pretty much full HP. Double dash kill from Keller will wipe up the remaining members of Ball State who just barely make it over that halfway threshold and I believe only really use one ult to do it. So the re-engagement here could be huge for Ball State. I do want to call out as well, uh, playing a Genji and swapping off of the Ana I think is a very interesting compositional change. I think it's more just to try and match it with Avani than it is sure. to try and combo with the Nanoblade because the Ana would just get left behind, especially now with Forgotten on the Tracer. It just That's in true. a very awkward spot. But now Blade used very early. Nobody's really there right away. Oh, what a boop from the Yankster! Oh, and, oh my goodness, and Spencer does it! I thought that was going to be a guaranteed Elamanda Spencer, but the Blade is a silent one. Rally removed from the fight at Baltic University Red. Really coming out strong here on this second point of Antarctic Peninsula. You can't see Ghost certainly winning the Tracer duel for the time being, and Forgotten is just that as that fight comes to a close. Phenomenal performance from Ball State as they're getting ready to say hello to 70% on the board. And changes are now coming for Fisher. Neb on to the Baptiste. Oh, gotta be. Keller yeah, will gotta be. back as well. So maybe not trying to, you know, I'm trying to figure out an experiment. That's the one I was trying to find with that comp. And more going board on basic comp here. But Ivani's still sticking. You gotta be sticking to what you know best with a Rampage online. It might work very well. Two members of Ball State already down. And that beat to carry Fisher College into this combat was very beneficial. Forgotten has fallen, so Ball State... Okay, never mind. Now down by three, so this is no longer yeah. a one engagement. But Keller's May swap as well. We hadn't seen May at the beginning of this. We're seeing her here toward the end. And yeah, I, I think the experimentation period is over for Fisher College. They're looking for that win once again. Yeah, except with Ivani on the Junker Queen is still an interesting change, but still Absolutely. somewhat works for a Ramacho substitute. Ball State, if you could win this fight with maybe just like the Pulse Bomb and maybe the Annihilation or Dita, I think you're actually in not a horrible spot to try and flip it and go to round three. Yeah, Ball State, you're going to be using that Deadeye early, at least to make space or force a Mortality Field, which both of those things were able to be done in that moment. Mortality Field offline for Fisher College. So all this damage is going to be considered permanent. A Rampage online. Oh, and it is Manway caught by it. Two have already gone down, though. Is it going to be enough? It's three from the side of Fisher College. Go down in the blink of an eye. Yakester trades it out. It's a 2v2 for the time being. Avani and Abs versus You Can't See Ghost and Yakester. It's up to these Lucios to do damage while also keeping their teammate alive. And unfortunately, Yakester is soloed out. You Can't See Ghost. Trying to get away, but Abs not one to let somebody run. Chases them down. Ten seconds left for a Ball State recontest, and it's gonna be a staggered one. That rampage was just ginormous from Avani. Even though they lose the first two members of the fight, they get three right after because of all of that damage and nullified healing that just can't go through for Ball State. A Blizzard from Keller isn't gonna be as valuable as they wanted, but it should be valuable enough. Man, we gone, forgotten on the Torb, finds you can't see, and now Ball State in a 3v4. They're gonna be falling like dominoes. It's as close as close can be, but a close simply doesn't matter when you find a victory, and Fisher College has done just that. Antarctic Peninsula ending in a 2-0 fashion in favor of Fisher. Fisher going in their groove, and now if you're Ball State, you just gotta find that wrinkle we were talking about pre-game yes. because that was about the start we thought what was going to happen here. You know, yes, with it being a map, people don't play a lot. We thought there was a chance, but they played the Ramacha Rush comp beautifully, and even the Junker Queen comp. We've seen Northwood play a little bit here and there. Yeah. We haven't seen it a whole lot outside of Northwood, but we've seen it work. And you could tell it's something they're trying, 
and they at least made those adaptations about halfway through the round to at least fold it into that I Ramatra counter a little bit more. But yeah, Fisher is doing Fisher things so far, and now we got to see if Ball State can actually, you know, step it up a little bit here and you know push them around a little bit because we know they can. Like you yeah, know, the possibilities right. there. It's just. Fisher is also being Fisher right now. Yeah, and I do want to say, you know, Ninja Curly Fry on the side of Ball State is consistently, or is one of the most consistent Genji players I have had the opportunity to see yeah. in the collegiate scene. I had the opportunity to meet Ball State and uh, Ninja Curly Fry in particular at the CECC Midwest last year. And I remember ever since then, I just always kind of remember them as a great Genji. Ran into them in a comp game the other day, actually. They were off rolling and I still lost, but that's a different story. <laughs> I know that Ball State does have a very real potential and a very real capability of taking Fisher at least to extra maps, at least preventing a four of some variety. I'm not going to lie. I forget what the map order was. I don't um, know. Hybrid next. next. Hybrid. Okay. So most likely probably King's Row, right? We're all like, what's the opposite of allergic? Because that's what we are. Like mods to a flame, collegiate players to King's Row. I've got a pretty good hunch. That's where we're headed. And there's our confirmation. Yeah. King's Row is our next map. Which it, I'm a mixed. I won't lie to you because I think Fish will just run the Ramatra Rush again. No, exactly. Be, yeah. And so unless they have something up their sleeve here, which again, they very well could. If they want to try and run the Rhine, you have to really play a little safe, especially after the Rhine uh, slight health change that came through. You have to play way more safe with these walls because they love just to wall the Rhine off. Use the pummel. And Ryan's dead at that point. Yep. So you can play around it. It is going to be pretty tough. That or they just have some sort of dive comp that it's ready. That, again, it's it's a risky bet. But I could see Ball stay at least trying it here. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's so funny because King's Row is a really interesting map in the way that it doesn't feel like it really change when overwatch 2 did yeah. because the composition in overwatch 1 that was most popular was ryan zarya may cassidy lucio bap right we jump into overwatch 2 all we did was just pluck zarya out of there and then it's the same composition now it's that ryan cast may lucio bap and we see it so often maybe sometimes bap can be an honor of course there's some room for versatility but the point does stand to this map in a lot of ways it can be considered solved we see the same compositions run over and over without a lot of room for error or change but i wonder if we're going to be seeing ryan at all we're most likely we are to see that romatra looks like both teams have already made that choice as well yeah, both teams running the Ramatra and the Lucio Bap, at least for Ball State currently. Fisher on the defense first, just wanting to set the tone. And I could definitely see them having a pretty lengthy defense here. Neb is on the Baptiste, but I can't tell if they are still in spawn or if that is something that they're actually wanting to run. Uh, I believe that's something that they're in spawn, though, which may be an issue. Or they're, or they're swapping roles. No, there we go. Um, no, I, I really like Neb on the bat. Late. Because yeah. Neb's a very aggressive support player, and I feel like Bap is the best way to make that work, right? Is to get up close and personal, to be able to do damage. I believe Bap has the highest individual damage output of supports in the game, especially with the Ant Matrix. So I wonder if this Fisher College comp is going to be Bap centric and allow Neb to do the damage he wants. As Ball State brings out a dive composition, though, it does become a little harder to play characters that are immobile, like a Baptiste. Forgotten takes Spencer down, though, and already that should be the red flag for Ball State. There come those giant arrows I talked about earlier, just tearing this team apart a 3k now for forgotten already halfway to a dragon yeah that is a ridiculous uh ridiculous tone at the very beginning here forgotten already halfway to that dragons like you said and that first time just falls apart for ball state you know it's spencer gets headshot right away and at that point you only got kirika whole heals and that only goes so far and this can yeah. pick up one by one this will be tricky to try and dive into because you're either going to dive on a forgotten who has a ton of peel or you got to somehow find neb in the back alone yeah, finding Neb in the back is going to be difficult when you do not have a counter sniper the way Forgotten is sniping right now. So, Dorn, yes, a railgun is technically a sniper, but you get one of those every, I don't know, 10 ish seconds, give or take. Just like that, Ninja Curly Fry going to give us a great example of what that railgun can do. Walled out of the fight long enough to guarantee a Yakester elimination, but when the tank is missing, it's very difficult to play a defensive position. Can Keller become that pseudo tank that so many people always refer to May as? It doesn't matter. Forgotten is just a beast, just a behemoth, a another 3K. It's just too easy for them. At it this really point, is. Sap. And it's, they're just not human, I will say. Like, they just consistently get the damage. They're finding those headshots during the beginning of these chaotic fights, and it sets the tone a lot of the time for the rest of the Falcons to follow up. Dragon Strikes there. Neb, as you said, already built up that Ant Matrix as well, doing a lot of damage during the mid fight. Mid fight is going to be the most important situation for somebody like Forgotten to get those eliminations, to get the damage for the rest of the team, to clean up the eliminations that they can't. Manway taking so much damage from Neb in the back line there. And the Primal Rage online, I'd really like to see a support dive, even if you're just kind of pulling focus and being distracting, removing what I, come on, 
come on. I didn't even see Yakester in that frame. And, and Forgotten finds them with an arrow. The Primal Rage comes out too little too late. Man, wait. Fully just demolished, popping a nano to keep them alive, and clearly it's worth it. Ball State throwing everything they have at the wall and praying any of it is going to be able to stick. Man, we pretty much giving their life to try and stall out, but unfortunately, so many Ball State members have gone down. This may all have been for nothing. I think they can at least get a tick here, as it is no healing available for Fisher at the moment. Avani and Kelly just have to back up, and it will be a very awkward change here, because, yeah, as you said, there's still a lot of members around. It's just they're so scattered. It looks like a recontesting is going to be happening here from the high ground, and you get almost two ticks, but almost is never going to be good enough. Avani should be able to go down if the target focus is there, but with the Katsune Rush on the side of Ball State, they all have the cooldown reduction, movement speed, and primary fire rate increase that you think would give them the advantage they needed. Winston, one of the few characters that actually doesn't really get an advantage, their ammo just runs out faster, but it looks like it did not run out fast enough to save the life of Abs. Fourth fight in a row, Yakestor is the first Ball State University member to go down. It looks like it's not going to be too damaging, though, as they are going to be able to cap this with just less than a minute left on the clock. Ball State University, 315 remaining. And they do get that stagger onto Nev as well, so that'll at least stall it out a good bit. Abs as well to follow. But man, we did they just they maybe a little bit too far? I can't tell yeah. if that was like just a long shot that headshot. somehow got him. Yeah, I think it was. But for Fisher, yeah, it's <laughs> unlucky in shower because that was definitely a, just a long range icicle <laughs> that. Laying it how maybe not how they actually thought it was going to, but that might actually allow Fisher to at least maybe not hold Archway, but try and challenge Archway if they sure. can win this next fight. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a very real opportunity to hold this King's Row one and a half because it's a situation like this where when you lose cart control, it can become incredibly difficult to regain it. However, Natural Ball State's going to be losing it as forgotten. The absolute sniper of a player is going to be able to go down early. No immortality field available for Neb, and even when he throws it down, he's just punched out of it. Manway removes him from the fight, and that should be the beginning of the end of Fisher College here on this secondary defensive play. Avani, I think, has the tank 1v1, though, and does stabilize the chance of the Fisher just a bit. The card, however, is moving a lot faster than I think they wanted it to. Forgotten on the Genji now. It puts some pressure on to Ninja Curly Fry, who... Other than that one fight that got him those first few ticks, it's been a little quiet, I think, Agreed. up to this point. Agreed. But I think um, more damage than final blow, and that is... A something. very early beat from Neb, or from Abs, excuse me, is not what I was expecting. Avani just going to get bioed, and that's the beginning of the end of this fight. I mean, we are done here before we can even begin. The Ant Matrix used the beat done for nothing, and Ball State getting, I hate to say it, pretty much a free fight off of a very early beat from Abs. They're swapping, but I, you know, that beat still could have been much more valuable. Yeah, you could tell it's okay, we need to swap, but as you said, even if it's like a few seconds later, yeah. like they had to rush in to get anything out of it, but instead... It was just two of them! Yeah, it was, it was just two of them to run in, like nobody was around for Ball State yet. They were just, okay, we just back up, whatever, and they just reinitiate with the Nano on the Manwe. And it finds the kills, but as you said, both support swap and forgotten now. Onto the widow as well puts a lot of pressure on the curly fry. Ninja Curly Fry having that pressure is going to make it difficult to play that mid to long distance character like Sojourn. You can't see removes Avani from the fight. Another ultimate not as successful as they were looking for. Keller's Blizzard is a silent one in Ball State. Once they got momentum, by golly, are they not going to lose it? Especially with the supportal combat player, Yankster, taking two eliminations out of that fight. Three with the help of You Can't See and Abs removed from the fight. Ball State University have taken a fight that was devastating into something that is unbelievably achievable for them. 2.15 on the clock and Fisher is scattered. They are in incredibly staggered. They have no alts to work with. Maybe an Infrasight from Forgotten soon, but the Pulse, at least for them, misses from Ball State. And now they can at least try and start this high ground push, but Ball State has so many ultimates. All stayed more ultimates then. They know what to do with in a critical moment like this. And I like to see Avani swapping under the D.Va because I do think D.Va is a pretty high value character on this site in particular. And with that overclock coming offline, that could be a really easy way to remove the value from it. Nanode Monkey in the back line. Going to be able to focus out Neb. Is the Sleep Dart there? Primal Rage is, and I don't like when people Primal when they're Nanode, but it looks like it is going to be able to get an elimination, and that's what matters. You can't see on a 15-player kill streak, 90 seconds on the clock. That is more time than they capped first point with. 90 seconds available is not a huge time bank, but it's a very, very good one, considering how the first three minutes of this map went. Yeah, it's ridiculous, because like you said, they had, what, a minute and a quarter left when they capped yeah. first point? Or not, and not even, I don't think. Yeah, not even. Maybe a minute? Yeah, but maybe a minute. They have a minute 30 at the very end of it, which, again, is very important because, excuse me, if they, hey, Fisher, cap with no time, the worst ball state can do is a draw, which will yep. be very big for them to, just, I think, just get one map.
under their sleeve because then you can okay you can feel it out a little bit even though i think fisher they tried to experiment a little bit there yes. with neb and abs swapping roles and the, the ana zen i can see it working on third phase but it's a little awkward yeah but okay credit to ball state we were talking about it before this map they may try and run something different seeing that you know the rush comp they kind of lost over there on antarctic peninsula and they do run out with a dive that took a little time to get warm but once it did it was pretty dang good dive yeah i have to agree the dive was looking really good from ball state university and i remember i feel like i tell this story every time i get the opportunity to cast them but i when i used to play collegiate my team was not the greatest we literally broke even on the season i think eight and eight so a very middle of the road team but i remember our magnum opus was beating ball state and even back then they were notorious for a dive composition a wrecking ball centric composition that was very difficult for us to beat but seeing that they can still rock a dive this strong that many years later goes to show the quality of the players on this team yeah, the quality is there. Like, the fact that they ran that kind of dive that excellently, even though dive hasn't been, you know, it's been in and out of meta, especially right. since Overwatch 2 has started. It's a huge credit to them, and Bionade hits, but take their life for it. Yeah, the Bionade is able to find some value, but unfortunately, Spencer and Man, we have both gone down to the blink of an eye. Fisher College should be able to cap this first point a lot faster than Ball State University did. So in reality, we're going to need to see a bit of a shakeup and a turnaround to try and prevent a complete and total snowball if Fisher finishes with four something on the clock. That could spell true disaster for Ball State. Oh, I wonder if you just cursed that. We'll, we'll see if the cast occurs. No, surely I didn't. Sure, surely, surely, surely I didn't. didn't cast the curse. Surely! Uh, Fisher College, watch you make a swap here, it looks like. Avani going back to the spawn room. They will now go on to the JQ. So not wanting mm. to run the dive. With the, not many much high ground here in second phase. I don't mind it for both yeah, state. Yeah, yeah, just keep the same thing. You know he's got to play a little bit more safe with this Widow always peeking around. Yeah, it's weird, but I don't dislike it. I think yeah. Dr. Queen is a lot better of a Winston counter than people give her credit for. Uh, I think she can really do damage against Winston. She can uh, hit the knife and pull him back in when he tries to leap out as well, which makes him just a freebie target. Man, we fully just stopped moving for a second there. Not fully sure what that was, but they're right back into the fight. And now Ball State University, they want to stagger this arch as long as they can, because once you stall the team, as I mentioned earlier here, it can be very easy to steal part control from them and disallow them to ever find it again. Unfortunately, Keller's elimination is for naught as Spencer goes down just as quickly. Yakes and abs traded as well it's a 3v3 and avani no supports but support's going to be returning a lot faster than man we who is at i don't know maybe 80 hp maybe well they were until they popped the commanding shell but again trades galore spawn advantage as you said though is in favor of fisher still primal oh my goodness okay. seven hp when he pulls that primal not the opportunity i was expecting but by golly you made it work my friend it looks like it's gonna be working well enough to give you at least another great stagger four and a half minutes on the clock i think man we will be sent back to the spawn room and they certainly will a rampage behind poor spencer every time they show their face they are deleted in fisher college a very dominant fight win there Spencer seems to be target number one, no matter who it 1, is. 1,000%. For percent. Fisher, like, yeah, Spencer is target number one, maybe except for Forgotten, who has Yakester. How many times has Yakester died very early in these fights? He's had, like, four or five times yeah, in the first Yeah, four in a row alone. in the first half, yeah. Yeah, it, these supports from Ball State are just getting roughened up 24-7. You can tell Ball State, they're trying to have a little more counter dive, but... It's a little rough so far. And I think we're picking Ana here for the bio nade, right? That's usually why yeah, she's a viable percent. character. But in reality, it's like we need to be playing somebody that has a little more mobility and can stay alive a little bit longer. The nanos haven't been giving the value we wanted. The bio nades aren't making up for the ability to be missed. And now as both islands have fallen, a lot of the damage is going to become a little bit more permanent. Keller taking that nano and holding it dry. Kitsune Rush going to be the ultimate use to counter it. Not the defensive play you're expecting. Forgotten throws an ultimate. There's going to be another one from Keller. And as Fisher uses everything they have, you can't even hate them for it because they've got three and a half minutes and most likely a third point cap in a second here. Yeah, second point cap goes through. They'll have, what, a little over four and a half minutes left yeah. on the clock. It is plenty of time to have a better time bank than what Ball State had during their attack. We'll see if Ball State can at least turn the fortune a little bit here. As you can't see Ghost, it seems like they're very hot and cold, right? Like, yes, there's 100%. been a few moments where they're playing extremely well and other moments Forgotten's kind of shutting them down. I want to see them land this pulse, maybe get that mojo a little back in their corner. Yeah, and you can see Ghost was on, I think it was like a 16 or 17 player kill streak in the yeah. first half, right? The attack was very good. The definition of hot versus cold. And unfortunately, like you said, this defense, playing Trace Run defense is traditionally harder. It's not as easy. You can't jump into the back line and flank around as much because your team usually needs you on the cards. And 
I've also got to say, you can't see he's been holding onto this Pulse Bomb for a little while here. Maybe a little longer than I would have liked. It's the fastest charging ultimate in the game. You can, for real, just dump it wherever you want and have it back in just a minute or two. Trying to hold on to it every fight they can, though. Has to recall, losing the 1v1 against Abs. A great stick onto Avani, but a commanding shot will keep them up and running. Kitsune, or excuse me, Suzu used early, forgotten. Much more value out of their Pulse Bomb, and a Spencer has fallen once again. Fisher are gonna have a lot of time unless Ball State can do something. Ball State's gotta get out at this point. You need to save everybody possible. Yakester dies late. You can't see Ghost. Barely is able to get out, but you don't have a lot of time to regroup and Fisher. They have a lot of ammo, Sound Barrier, yeah. and Rampage ready. Oh, time for the nothing, but it's still going to be a 3k from Avani. The Sleep Dart comes in too little too late. The Caster Curse was not there. I said four and a half. That's only 315. So, Fisher College, 315, 45 seconds less than they start with here. So, a very, very strong performance. Ball State's best case scenario is capping all three in these 90 seconds. Yeah, Ball State, I would say the workable range is if they can get like halfway through streets yep, i think that's agreed. a workable range i think ideally they get into third phase at least to a certain degree and then that's definitely workable but fisher man on that attack they just looked flawless especially with the jq like you said it's not the greatest pick right now but especially against the winston it's a very underrated pick because yep. a lot of it is okay we're gonna move the winston around we're gonna make sure that they get punished every single time they try and dive and it has been just so hard for Manui to get a lot of value in these. And even on the flip side, when they do get aggressive by Fisher, it just seems like either Ninja or Spencer is dead within like five seconds. Without Seriously. fail. Yeah, it's really been unfortunate. I think Spencer in particular on this Ana has been dove by Fisher College every single time they have shown their face and it really makes it difficult to get in and to get any kind of healing, get any eliminations or even use those Bionades offensively because you're stuck throwing them at your own feet 98% of the time. I think the Ana can work very well, but I think Fisher College is doing such a good job isolating her and removing her from the fight that Ball State might want to try something different here. I know that Nano Winston is one of the highest damage damaging output characters in the game, but right now you haven't even really had an opportunity to show that off because your Ana's getting her steps in back and spawn yeah they just haven't been able to build it up in time like you said the right few times they have it just you know it'd be a nano primal sometimes doofus is maybe not the pick i thought i would see now man we is quite the good dude he I, I is will a say. very good dude so in a way i respect this it's just it could get heavily oh, punished that happened last time forgotten got a pick on the yakester man we's already deja gone vu? down ninja curly fry gets something i'm getting deja vu for sure here as <laughs> ball state university they get one pick but they lose three in the process and it makes it so difficult to work with ncf a second elimination though Ball State University has a very real chance of contesting if they can get back fast enough. Both DPS missing, and it looks like you can't see. Wants to take up as much space as they can off it. Bionade Force commanding shot used as well, but Yakester overextending into the front line, getting chased by Avani into the wings. Ooh, man, we a little too far up, but Avani goes down, and Ball State should be able to do this. Yeah, especially because they force out those resources early, like you said. You know, Bionade Force, commanding shout force. Fisher have nothing to re-engage with. And at that point, man, we, yep. they're almost just like, hey, just punch me. Like, shoot me, whatever. <laughs> Let your tank die behind me. Ball State cap with just a tiny bit of time on the Keller gets a little bit too close to that Doomfist and recall is forced. Ball State have the pulse. Nano soon online as well. And the Dead Eye. It's honestly not a bad set of weapons here to at least try and get a good amount through the second phase. Yeah, the Deadeye in particular can buy you, you know, 10, 20 meters. But sometimes those yeah. meters make the difference. So it can, you just stand on the cart, pop that Deadeye, and pray you don't get slept by Neb, who no, no, unfortunately is notorious for hitting his sleep darts in the most critical of moments. Pulse Bomb from you can't see is a silent one once again. A bit of a whip into the street. Nobody there to get caught by it. Keller already taken down by NCF, who is fully just dominating this fight right now. Uh, never mind. Nano comes out, and NCF goes down, and Neb will be taken out by you can't see. Perhaps relying on this Nano a bit much should Rampage right back out of the fight onto Cart. But oh no, poor Spencer, what are you doing? Spencer in the back completely 1v1ing this Junker Queen and losing. Several members going down and Avani making this Junker Queen look wonderful. Ball State not making it as far as I would have wanted, but still making it pretty darn far into the streets face. Avani's just so good. Just like, so good. What can I say? They're so good. They're able to, they live in the back line. As you said, with the Nano, it's like, okay, you're stuck in no man's land at that point. Yeah. And both they have the slight advantage there. All of a sudden, you turn around, get a lot of damage into Spencer, pop the Rampage, you kill basically Spencer and Manwee just with that. It just takes a little bit of time for it to go through. 
and you're able to pick up the rest of the kills. That is that was quite the impressive solo performance from Havani I mean, from Avani. And now you got a lot of time to not really go too far. Yeah, a lot of time to not do much with it is not a good spot you'd want your opponents to be in. But right now we are seeing a very dominant and incredibly strong performance from Ball State. Will it be answered back by Fisher College? Only time will tell, my friends, and we can only hope that Fisher College is uh, going to put up the fight we expect. Yeah, we know that Ball State can fight pretty hard, especially with the Doomfist set. But again, I don't mind it, but like Fisher is running the, one of the best comps yep. to try and counter it out. Because Ivani, all right, you know, you can knife him back in if you want to make sure the sleep or the nade lands. Keller can just chase him down. Forgotten is probably the one that's very susceptible to the Doomfist. But even if you grapple away, okay, you're forcing more cooldowns from Manwe. So... It's a lot of pressure onto the rest of Ball State to try and pick up that slack that man we may just be building up purely because Fisher are playing around it so well. The defensive Doomfist is always a little clunkier to work with than the one on the offense and as Avani is just literally in the back line already. Suzu has to be used to keep the team up and running and Ninja Curly Fry will be the first one to go down. Forgotten on the Widowmaker for the first time of this King's Row, weirdly enough. Like we see Widow, oh no, sorry, second time, who was on the offense last time as well. Avani punched away by Manwe, but the healing is there for one tank and unfortunately not the other. Manwe, 98 HP, Extra has already fallen and Ball State University needs to try and go for a recontest here. I think stalling point is critical, but a Spencer Abs, Manwe trade almost guarantees Fisher the advantage they need is most of them will be respawning way too far back to contest. Yeah, nobody's going to be even close to try and contest this. This guy make sure they can get to Arch in time, and that's why is just trying to get out. If you're Ninja Curly Fry, you cannot beat this. Um, Spencer, I like to swap at least to the Kiriko, trying to deny the value from Ned and Avani a little bit, but you just wonder if the, if the time bank that you're trying to work against is a little bit too much at this point. Right, it is a pretty overwhelming time bank. Two minutes on the clock, and Fisher State has to make it, or Fisher College, excuse me, has to make it 20 meters, 10 now already. This is going to be an incredibly difficult fight to win, so I think Ball State may have to give up this second map. But on the bright side, it's not a BO3, it's a BO7. So Fisher still has to win the two more maps. I think Escort comes up after this, and then Push being the fourth map type. So Ball State is going to have a lot of great map choices to make if this is a loss, which, to be fair, they're already making me doubt my words a little bit. Two members have gone down. Man, we get slept into the back line. And a they nano on to forgot. What? Confidence um, is key, I guess. I I guess. Do they get anything from this? They pop no. the infrasight as well. There's no way. No. Surely not. Surely not an Elim on to Manwe there. That is devastating. Forgotten. Back to that, he's just too good comment, bro. By golly, what a cleanup from Fisher College. They go into a 2v5 with a nano to Widowmaker and live to tell the tale. Capping that fourth point technically and giving themselves a 2-0 advantage here in this series. Halfway done with the goal they set for themselves here today. I'm, just, I'm mind blown. <laughs> just, I was not expecting the nano widow to come out. This is Avani practically winning them this fight and Straight setting up. themselves up to win the map. Nice little 3k for them. That was a ballsy move, but we know Fisher is kind of known for, hey, we're just going to throw some random stuff out there once in a while because they are a team that just plays off confidence, right? Yeah. Like, you have Neb on that team. That, that Enough said, right? Like, you have Neb on that team. They're going to be confident 24-7. And even though it wasn't Neb that time around, it was forgotten. It's like, hey, it, it, it worked out. It, for better or for worse, it worked out. And going into escorts, they have a pretty nice series advantage. Yeah, a pretty nice series advantage indeed. They've essentially turned this into a best of three for themselves if they win yeah. the next two maps. And I think that's the scariest thing about Fisher is, you know, you can say they've got Neb, enough said. And the scary thing is you can say about all five players, right? Yeah. They've got Avani, enough said. They've got Forgotten, enough said. Like, you can say about every single player because all five of them have this terrifying pop-off potential where they can carry and deadlift a team in a moment when the team needs it most. And it's why they keep winning these maps that feel so close. And then all of a sudden, it felt like they never were. It's because Fisher College, when they turn it on, it is rare that you're able to turn that team back off with the aggression and the speed they bring to the table. It is so hard to play against if you're any team, right? We've seen this in CECC qualifiers. We've seen this in ECAC. They are just so dang hard to play against because no matter where you look, there is weapons on that team. Yeah. You try and turn it around. For, so for going into escort, you got to think for ball stay okay. The die have got countered up by the JQ comp. The Ramatsu rush did not work. What now? And you wonder, okay, maybe poke, like if you want to try, you know, maybe uh, Circuit Royale, maybe if you want to try Shambhala, you could, right. but 
you're running out of options that you at least haven't tried from like a base macro composition level, unless you really want to like change it up and you think, Hey, maybe the Winston dive can work. If we have the Kiriko have more of an impact and maybe just have them play a little more safe then I can right. see it work. But it's a rough, it's a rough roll of the dice so far for ball state. Yeah, when well, we said, Hey, they need to get to a great early start," And so far Fisher's just, denied that well on the bright side ball state is going to have these couple of minutes here in this upcoming break to discuss what map they want to pick what composition changes they want to make and what exactly it is they want to do for the remaining maps of this series don't go anywhere folks ecac grand finals coming at you in just a few minutes or not esports more esport teams will go under the umbrella of athletics and I'm, I'm kind of indifferent in terms of whether it should because i don't want esports to go down the road that some conventional sports have gone down with the NCAA. So we have a unique opportunity to kind of craft esports in a way that fits what esports is as opposed to trying to fit it into a conventional athletics box, so to speak. Right, right. You know, I think the success of our program and getting participation is exactly that. The fact that we're not tying it in necessarily to athletics and NCAA eligibility. Um, like Carolyn, we have, we have, uh, we probably have three or four schools that are, are under athletics. Um, and I know it puts them in a difficult position sometimes trying to make some decisions. I got a request uh, recently uh, to consider allowing part-time students to participate um, in, in during this year because some schools struggle sometimes to fill out all the games that they want to play with us. And, um, we held off on that for now. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying, we defer to the institution and, and say, what's your policy for your, for those that are under uh, student development or activities, what's your policy for allowing students to participate? And if you certify that they're eligible under your, your current policies, then that's good for us. Um, I also think, I, and I was part of some of the conversations early on with the NCA years ago about the NCA getting involved as a, as a division two representative and I was crossing my fingers that that wouldn't happen um, just because I, I think this needs time to grow, you know, and expand. Can I, right, can I ask right. Bob a, a question? Cause you mentioned um, part-time enrollment. Um, and one of the things that we've done here is that as a conference, we've just set eligibility standards, full-time enrollment, um, making progress towards your degree as the institution defines it. Are you guys doing something like that as well? Because um, we've gotten that part-time enrollment question, and we've said no. Yeah, no, I don't think we've gotten that far down the line, Carolyn, to, to ask for that. I think we we kind of put it on the institution, but we do say that they, the student has to be a full-time. You know, now they could be a full-time grad student, but they have to be full-time as as from what the institution. Uh, is yeah, our our eligibility requirements are just as simple as can be. You have to be a full-time student uh, 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 in good standing. Yes. And, and after that, and that's about it. Uh, now we may, I, I think we wanted as few impediments getting this thing rolling as possible in, in the outset. I do think as, as schools get more competitive, um, they will start to distrust one another. And, and that's why we, we have this 500 page NCAA manual because schools distrust one another. And, but we're not there yet. You know, right now there's still a collective Let's let's move this forward. And the fact that the NCAA is not administering it, I think, is really helpful to to the growth of it of it all. And yes, we allow grad students. We don't even have a four or five year clock. If 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 you if you are full time enrolled for ten years in good standing, you can do. And why not? Why would we not say that that's okay? Now, eventually, like I said, we may change our minds if 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 the schools require it. They say, no, no, this is crazy. Look what they're doing uh, over there. We don't like, you know, but, but we're, I think we're still a long way from that. Uh, Alex, do you have anything? Yeah. I mean, I, I echo everything that really Carolyn has, has said, you know, um, you guys are basically
What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the ECAC Overwatch Grand Finals, Fisher College versus Ball State. And it has been a 2-0 series in favor of Fisher if you are joining us just now. Our escort map coming up next. We've already gotten confirmation that it will be the Shambali Monastery. So, Salty, going into this, I feel you and I have similar opinions of this map traditionally. Um, yeah, it's defensive-sided, like, yeah. ridiculously. Um, so... That, it makes me worry a little bit here, especially because I believe Fisher is staying on the defense first going into this map, so they can try and carry over that momentum. But for Ball State, there is a, a silver lining here. We do have a sub that, okay, this could be what changes the tide here for Ball State. Yes. Yeah, we've got Raven Strider coming in on the tank, because they actually did inform us earlier that Raven Strider was doing something else and then would be joining the series. So yes. is jumping in on that tank role, which then also implies that we're going to be seeing a couple of other compositions. I believe it is uh, Spencer moving over to the DPS. Forgot the name, but I remembered it. So Spencer is a DPS player, has been on tank for a lot of today. So hopefully we're going to be able to see them, uh, or sorry, not on tank, has been on support, support. for a lot of today. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to be able to see them improve their versatility a little bit and, and overperform in this appropriate and usual role. Yeah, this is where I think Ball State are either going to at least make this series very interesting or it's going to be pretty much done. Um, yeah. I, I think this is a very critical map here for Ball State. Because it's either, hey, you change it to 2-1. You got momentum going in your side. Now that Raven Strider yeah. is back in. Or you're down 0-3. You need to pray for a reverse sweep which could be extremely rough against a team like Fisher. So yeah. this is going to be a very pivotal game in this series. I just got to see if Ball State can get a nice early start and know that they have maybe their more natural lineup actually into this championship game. A more traditional and more... Um... More comfortable. Like familiar lineup. Yeah, yeah, comfortable. That's the word. A more comfortable lineup is definitely going to be something that this team can vibe with, we hope. Now, Jambali Monastery is interesting because when I talk about Valorant, I always say, okay, a new map can be good. You can kind of catch a newer team off guard and you can kind of use it against them. I'm not sure the same principle goes for Overwatch. I used to say you could do it in either. Ish. I don't really think I agree anymore. Um, I think it kind of does, but not for as long, it feels like. Right, right. Yeah, I, yeah. teams grow familiarity to the map a little bit faster. And uh, it feels like there's also less, uh, I don't want to say individuality, because that's not the point I'm trying to make. Just less, like, experimentation with a map. Like, in Valorant, you can kind of go around from site to site. You can call the locations and kind of give your team a proper idea of what to do next. Where in Overwatch, you have to escort that card. 100% of the time, you have to be on that card. So I do think that makes it a little bit harder to get value in using a new map against an old team. And I think Fisher College, especially with the compositions they've been running, double sniper from Fisher now as well. This is a very strong comp to work with. This is an extremely good comp on the setup and just forgotten, it's just chill. And they go on a flank, not able to find anything. But it will be Ball State trying to force Fisher off of this high ground. They will go through the building and they will just try and force everybody off. Not caring a whole lot about Card at the moment. Yeah, not particularly worried with the success of the Card and NCF being oh. taken out by Keller. Makes it a little easier for Fisher to continue this dominant defensive play. Losing your Tracer, not the end of the world. Not the worst elimination to go down against you. So I wonder if we're going to be seeing a continued forward push. Now, okay, now both DPS down. Going to have to slow your roll a little bit. Wow, Abs really hitting some critical shots. Yeah, they get, they're getting very comfortable up in that front line. And they do lose Neb in the process because of it. And forgotten, actually. Spencer with a nice little shot all the way from the spawn doors. That could open it up here for Ball State if they just take their time. But Fisher, yeah, just playing that long-range game extremely well. Keller finds one at the beginning. It's just going to be a struggle for Ball State to try and actually push into this space. There's so much poke that can just fend them away. Yeah, so much poke to take somebody down early on. The incredible accretion comes out as well. Opens up the space for the remaining members of Fisher to backpedal into the Mega beneath the stairs. And already they're going to be able to regroup as a full five as that Sonic Arrow does give us the information the Sonar Arrow, or I don't know, whatever. I don't play Hanzo, guys. I don't like Hanzo, but I know that Recon Arrow is going to be able to get the information they need. They know Ball State's in a full five recontest, so how does the reapproach come out? Okay, well, maybe that's how. Uh, Avani yeah, forgot yeah. to find a two piece immediately. There, there's no fight to commentate. Yep, not really. Uh, Keller falls. And, oh! Uh, okay, actually, maybe there is. And oh! Forces out. Wow. Avani just absolutely taking the ego fight on that one. You're going to oh, bet. So am I. Takes man we down, completely eliminates the use of that annihilation. The Gravitic Flux quite silent as well. And as that Bionade finds its way onto this rope, Robotic Ramatra. Wow, I'm actually amazed that he's still alive. 
I think he'll live too. Yeah, Immortality Field is used, and now they can just pop the Nemesis form to bring it back, but Ab's not giving up on this quite yet. The Dragons from Spencer, a bit of desperation as the Sights from Forgotten go up as well. I think Keller's gonna try to pop the Dragons from an off angle here, and it looks like they are gonna throw a little higher up than I expected. And the beat drop. Okay, there's a lot of ultimates I, I really just don't enjoy in this fight so far. But as the supports are traded out here, one to one, we see Abs being chased into oblivion by Yakester, who's taken down by Keller with 80 seconds left standing. Keller doesn't miss a darn arrow. Phenomenal cleanup job from Fisher College, and with only 70 seconds left. That was just that was bonkers. Like, what what was that fight? It's so many ultimates. It was one of the fights out. of all time. It was one of the fights of all time, and now no ultimates for either side because just everybody nothing. threw everything into that. I can't believe Abs lived during that. Yeah. I thought Yakester had it. All of a sudden, they get hit with an arrow, and that was the end of that story. And now False Tate, you only got just under a minute left. You still gotta get all the way back to that car and then actually okay. finish the cap too. Hold on, wait a minute, Spencer. Okay. With the Storm Arrow, takes Forgotten offline, a huge space maker in the sense of removing the Widow from the fight. You can walk down these long sites a little more comfortably. There is still Hanzo uh, firing logs in your general direction, so we're gonna Abs have to be like careful. All the way in the back. No way you live, bro! Why can the Swift Step go that far? Fully just gets right back out of the fight. A phenomenal bionade on the manway. Forces out an early immortality field, which is destroyed. It keeps the tank up and running, though. The accretion does not get much value, and it should be a Gravitic Flux Nano combo from Fisher College that we're looking for. And there it is. The Nano, the Flux, the team known as Ball State University rips to absolute shreds. And Fisher College having a field day with their performance so far. Actually, really surprised that accretion didn't hit, but it's not like they needed it to. They still get the team kill in the final 10 seconds. Yeah, and just because of how long that fight goes, Ball State nowhere even near a recontest. Yep. And that is, again, if you can just stall on this point, especially on this map, it, just, it takes so much time off the clock. And Fisher, they shut the door on what could have been a very good map for Ball State. But I do want to say, we don't call this the corner of doom for nothing, right? That is like, very true. There yeah. is a chance Fisher also gets full held here. I do not want to write Ball State out. Oh, I've yeah. seen teams full hold on this exact corner. I actually do not know the last collegiate map I cast where we got past this first corner. That's how often it happens we get stuck here. And I, I, I'm not prepared to say this might be any different. And that's fair. It, it's weird because, yeah, the last match, I think that I casted on this map too. I think it was OD. And it's okay, both teams actually fully capped the map. But then the stalls and OT were in that exact point. So it's like... Yep. No, at some point in time, that point of the map is going to be highly contentious and it'll have a massive effect on the map. And I, I don't blame Ball State, I guess, trying to experiment with the rush. It can work on this map, but especially on the defense, when you're running this kind of a poke, it is yeah. just brutal to even get close and forgotten. Usually took somebody out before they even got there. And at that point, the Cardinals just, there was nothing they could have done. Yeah, possible hot take here. I wouldn't hate seeing Manwi on Azaria right now. Because I feel like the way they've been playing yeah. Ramatra, they want to be super up close in your face. They want to be super, like, in the combat. And that's literally what Zarya Bubbles are for. Like, you've got a Genji. That works perfectly with Zarya Bubbles. You could help get the Sojourn in and out of combat. It would be weird. It would be unconventional. But I feel like we have seen a pretty aggressive lack of depth from the comp or from the hero pool of Manwi so far. We've seen Winston and Rom, and that's it. Like, I really would like to see other things from this uh, player because I understand that those are the meta right now, but Manwi has been losing the tank matchup pretty aggressively to Avani so far. And then we'll Ooh, try to... Okay, okay nice okay. dive to begin okay. here for Ball State. Okay. This is good. This is really good. I, I like this a lot. Ball State looking phenomenal in the first fight of this map, burning about 30, maybe even 40 seconds to a minute off the clock. A very contested dive comes out from the team. They all live for it. If they can keep that up, I I'll keep my mouth shut. We just need that level of coordinated aggression. Yep. We've seen individualized aggression from this team. But when it doesn't coordinate like that, it was great. They punished Forgotten trying to do a flank, and it was a very quick fight. A fight that began and ended in this very same breath. Man, we though, again, a bit of an overextension. Nobody's there to keep him alive. They have to expend a mortality field. And as you're taking a honk shoe on the middle of the field, Abs sends you back to the spawn room. Ravenstrider gone, and Boston University have to give up this first fight. Or second yeah. fight. Is that, yeah, it's going to feel like a first fight, though. Still <laughs> over two and a half minutes now for Fisher College as they start going up that straight away. And just because, yeah, they only have like 25 meters to go. They're feeling pretty good. You have Keller already looking for something. And Nanoblade, if they can build it up, could be the finishing blow. 
Nano Blade here. Oh, could just never be mind. The nail in the pause. coffin. And we got a pause. A very quick, aggressive call out as well. Not sure who's supposed to be pausing, but I do believe the rules dictate you pause at the end of a fight, unfortunately. It looks like NCF will get the elimination onto Abs. And I, that was a call from Ball State. Oh, and Discord fully uh, is down. Interesting. Okay, um, we're going to come back to us, I think, here for a second. Hi, yeah, everybody. So, well, Abs is also a little frustrated. They got killed when they were just standing still. Um, that's awkward. Uh, because, yeah, it was hard to tell. Was the pause requested right before the fight? Yeah. Or was it at the very beginning of the fight? It felt like it was right before the fight actually began. It was just very odd timing of when, I guess, they're discord crashed which obviously uh that's pretty important um i guess we're somewhat pretty... lucky hours hasn't to be honest because yeah. then the whole broadcast falls apart so i'm kind of glad that we're we're still here but yeah i think really unfortunate timing on a critical moment like that uh right before the beginning of a fight but i'm talking like a second or two so the fight probably had technically already been done yeah it it's unfortunate and it's tough because that's probably the last fight of the map in, in a lot of ways but now abs has gone down makes it a little harder to win. So a lot of variables we played right now. And as this tech pause kind of continues, I I, I don't want to go back to, to verbally beating up man. We I am only hard on these teams because I know both of them quite well and I respect them. And I know that they take this as criticism and not hatred, but it's like right now the, the tank pool is not, I'm not vibing with it. It has not worked super well so far. Go, going into any of the push maps is map number four. I don't think the ROM is going to work as well as they want it to. There's a lot of changes I'm hoping to see salty, but before we get there, let's let's finish here. Yeah, it's finished up here, as it will be, I think, a two-for-one trade from Ball State. And Fisher, well, I was about to say we're going to back up, but all of a sudden, forgotten, they're still over here on the coast, and they almost get Raven Strider. A very bold play from Forgotten. Neb finding Raven Strider as well. Forgotten goes down to Manwee's purple hug, and all of a sudden, they've got to get back out of the cart and try and stall for as long as they can. Beat drop Nano Blade, an absolutely invincible Genji, ripping your team apart one slash at a time. NCF goes down, and I believe the rest of Ball State will be falling not far behind them. Fisher College in that final fight give themselves a 3-0 advantage going into map number four. It ought to be a reverse sweep here from Ball State if they want to try and win the ECAC, but Fisher College just continue to just beat up the Cardinal here in this series. And it's, again, it's just Fisher being Fisher. And I yep. think a lot of it is they realize the game plan from Ball State. It is very, I would say, traditional in the fact that, hey, they're going to try and be aggressive in the front, especially Manwe in the front line will try and be very aggressive with the Nemesis form. And they've punished it pretty harshly because a lot yeah. of the time it'll leave somebody in ball state in the back line very open, whether it be from a snipe or from a dive. And just Fisher continue just to punish that fight after fight. Every single fight, Fisher has found the opportunity to strike. They've snuck in, gotten the eliminations they needed, and continued to bulldoze this fight. But I think this was the expectation going into tonight, right? This is Fisher, a yeah. top five team in the entire country, the entire collegiate scene. So going into map number four, Coliseo, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think Forgotten's gonna. Oh, bless you! Couldn't get my point out in time. Um, the sneeze got me. <laughs> um, I, I'm a little worried because Fisher's gonna run Widow, especially on yeah. this first bit. The, it's it's a risk, I think, from both state, but it may lean slightly more to the dive. I think if you're running dive, though, you'd go Esperanza. So yeah. maybe they're trying to find that that middle ground. But yeah, I worry. I worry a little bit for Ball State because, like we said, that was the map they needed to win. Yes, I feel like from like a momentum point the of view, the difference between a two one and a three zero. I mean, it's pretty vast, yeah. and now you're stuck in an O three hole to where hey, you need to win four maps in a row, which is incredibly without, hard against yeah, any team. Yeah, without dropping one, you've yeah. got to win four. That is, especially I, against Fisher, like ooh. that is. That is notoriously difficult. It's still possible. We've seen Ball State have some pretty nice comebacks in the past, but yes, it's a very rough spot because Fisher is just playing extremely well, and it feels like the Ball State just isn't living more than like 10 seconds into these fights. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say, the last time I saw Fisher College play a push map, it was Coliseo, and it was actually at the little highlight reel at the beginning of today. It's yeah. they're playing Harrisburg at the CECC East Qualifier, and it was very very close, like an overtime win for Fisher. So I know at the time their push wasn't super clean and coordinated. And of course, that was also Harrisburg, which is like another top 10 team in the country. And I think there is a possibility that Ball State can deconstruct this team pretty effectively. But I think it starts with 
making changes. I, I think we're seeing Ball mm-hmm. State's hero pool not being particularly deep, albeit Ninja Curly Fry, who has played uh, several different characters. But I think the rest of the team does need to try new things and try to adapt because Overwatch, that's what sets it apart from other first-person shooters, is that adaptation, is the ability to go through and play different heroes and to counter your opponents by playing the proper characters. I just feel like we're not seeing that kind of play from Ball State tonight. No, it's been a lot of sticking to their guns and just thinking, hey, it'll work eventually, when in reality so far tonight, it just hasn't. Like, it, it just hasn't. And it seems like, at least initially here, Fisher will just be running pretty much what they ran over there on King's Row. Avani on the JQ, the rest of this pretty standard rush with Forgotten yeah. on the Widow. And Ball State, again, to a degree, the same thing with the Ramatsu rush. Yes, you have Ninja Curly Fry on the trace we haven't seen them a whole lot on it because uh, a lot of the time is you can't see ghost yes on the tracer so maybe well never mind they're on the sojourn anyway so retract that i like this statement though. i like that better because we've at least seen them pop off on that hero tonight yep. it just has to be a little bit more consistent yeah we just need a little bit more consistency to be key in a moment like this and right now ncf needs to play that long distance game unfortunately you can't play too long distance though because there is a silly little purple sniper waiting for you on the other side. So got to keep an eye on Forgotten here. And I like the rotation we're seeing from Fisher to not go through center. They're instead going to try to sneak up and kind of flank Ball State. A huge Bionid from Neb puts two down. Keller and Spencer going to be traded out in simultaneous. And Shimada Bros taking a nap with one another. Man, we deep to the back line. Wants to find Neb and almost can, but just can't get that final Phantom Punch. My goodness, man. Very unfortunate. I cannot believe Neb is still standing. And oh my goodness. I mean... Uh, unlucky is the only word I got. If I was Manui, I'd be... Uh, I'd swap on God. I'd swap. <laughs> I'd, I'd be so frustrated with that. It's like, how does them not die? But they just continue to live. And now for guys, just looking at the spawn doors. And yep, uh, Pop goes the Weasel Raven Strider. Test fate just a little bit too much. They can take it on Fisher. Again, just doing Fisher things in Ball State. They'll try and stick to their guns. Spencer now, though, is on the Tracer now. Spencer has that Tracer locked up here and takes Forgotten down early. I think Tracer can be a pretty effective Widowmaker counter unless the Widowmaker is, you know, flying with a sixth sense or something. But Avani and Keller find two. Manly does take Avani out of the fight, but unfortunately 200 HP. The support's just barely there to heal you up. It's going to be a little bit clunky from Ball State, but a fight win is a fight win. 40 meters is actually really, like, not that good from Fisher College there as the first attacking team. I always say, like, 60 to 80 is when you can really feel comfortable. I'm talking, like, full first point, or first forward spawn gain where you're like, yeah, that was a good job. 39 meters uh, does leave a little bit for, for wonder there, a little bit of, of room for improvement. The, that little boob, though, does save Neb in the back. Spencer tried to go for it and forgotten to, wow. What I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, there's not much to say when this guy steps on the field. Forgotten has been a behemoth every single time we've seen him. Almost to the point where it's, it's become the expectation that he's going to top frag in lobby every single time the way he continues to do so. A great domination of Ball State so far. And Fisher College, they lose bot control for half a fight. They gain it back in the blink of an eye. And they're looking to approach that forward spawn as quickly as they can. And they didn't even need to use the nano for Blade. And now Keller goes in with one themselves. Dry Blade, 36 HP, bumped up to 90. We call use. A blade runs out, and I think that might be Keller going down. No, instead it's Abs. Avani and Abs have both fallen and fall state. They watch the card just get over that 50 meter threshold for Fisher College, but not that forward spawn quite yet. Where, man, we, where are you going? This, this is this is your fight to take right now. Yeah, they just want to make sure this widow dies, and to be fair, I don't that's, blame yeah, them. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what I'm worried about! They still get one! If yeah. you're not in the way, if you're not in the way to tank the bullets, I, I smell it in the water that Forgotten was getting an elimination right there. Now, lucky it was the fastest player on your team, so they will be returning to the fight pretty quickly, and it's going to make it a 4v4, though, if Ball State no longer having that advantage or rampage against them. Raven Strider needs the perfect Suzu to cancel out this ultimate. He can't be getting away with this. He can't Truly. keep getting Truly. away with this. And at least Ball State, like you said, they at least get some barricade progress here with the bot. You have a lot of ults to work with as well, but the one thing that could change everything, if they can bait out the Suzu early, is the Rampage. Yeah, 1,000%. The Suzu oh, is going to be held to that Rampage. And it looks like the Suzu was used. The beat to catch on the side of Yake Strider. Forgotten, taken out by Spencer in the back line. And in lieu of a uh, Suzu, they're going to use a beat. And it looks like it actually works out pretty well. Two members of Fisher College have fallen. A third should be just around the part of a man. we eating another Bionade. Has to jump across the shields here. Spencer into Avani. Neb and Keller join them in the spawn room as well. And now Fisher College. Going to be seeing the, uh, the, the number tick up against them. Ball State has a good chance of... 
equalizing the percentage at least. A little bit of smack talk in chat. Oh, just, just a, a wee little, bit. Just a, just a little bit of a friendly banter going back and forth. Forgotten trying to find another pick, but I have a feeling Spencer's gonna try and find it. They drop with this boss. Avani oh. has ended the fight before it can even begin. Spencer does yep. get the pulse bomb on Forgotten, but I think the fight's gonna be over pretty aggressively. The Lucio and Sojourn taking offline. A swift step out into the axe. That carnage is exactly living up to its namesake, especially as Avani drops a 4K. No, let's make it all five. They're on the Junker Queen, a character that I absolutely love getting playtime like this, and it really gives Fisher College a huge advantage they need. Forgotten. Um, Sim? I mean, yeah, all right, sure. I don't... I I don't mind it, I guess. Yeah, um, if you can make it work, I don't think Sim's ever a bad pick, you know? Like, as long as you know what you're doing. It's different. Oh, it's, it's different. It's, it's different, but it, hey, if you're Fisher, you're Fisher. You make a lot of things work that normally can't. Yeah, I mean, see how people normally don't do that? Like, it's, it's a little different here. And it does seem to be different for Fisher College, but not different enough to hurt them as oh Keller is just God. burning Ball State's chances of winning this fight. A tried and true absolute powerhouse play from Fisher College once again. Nanoblade cleans up and Fisher College finds themselves just shy of that forward spawn, which is almost a guarantee now. Avani has gotten kill credit for every single elimination in the last two fights. Yeah. Whether it That's be an assist or a final blow, this is just ridiculous from them. And now they have the Rampage again. You know, well, they will get to use it. Forgotten. Fully caught out in the corner. No Rampage offside. MCF falls to Keller. And I think Abs is... Wow, you survived that. No, okay, nope. never mind. Yankster made it personal, got out there, and just fully dominated that matchup. Keller Vortex into the spawn room below, and with 70 meters forward spawn just barely gained. Fisher College has a pretty critical advantage going into this next combat. And now they can just try and play it to where, hey, we win a fight, we lose. Yep. And it's yep. completely fine for them as everybody is around the beginning of the map here as they were all able to get close spots. Forgotten, trying to drop a TP bomb into the back line, but. Hasn't gotten the lineup they need quite yet. Spencer finds Keller, Avani, and Neb go down, and Avani oh. gets walled in by Spencer for the Rampage. A very difficult maneuver, but an incredibly effective one when you're able to pull it off like that. Ball State University has a very real chance of possibly taking a lead here. I think they definitely can't. Forgotten Glory and the Sims actually backfired pretty heavily. Absolutely. In my opinion, for the Falcons, because you don't have that opening pick potential. They had a lot of the time with them on the hit scan. Yeah, I think I think there was a pretty aggressive move and one that may not be working as well as they wanted. Four meters shy of taking the lead and two members having already gone down. Abs and Man we though traded out. And with a nano to boot, a beat drop only for the supports. A pretty large blunder from Yakestar, I'm not gonna lie, but Ball State University just shy of taking the lead. A mere four meters separates them in about five. They were definitely trying to save Man we there and just 100%, didn't 100%. get it off in time and now the bot will flip. And they used a lot there too, you know, but they still have the blizzard. That is a big thing here for Ball State is if Fisher gets a little too aggressive, pop the blizzard, try and counter it out. They do not have the advanced spawns yet. So if you win this, you're actually not in a bad spot to get checkpoint yourself. Yeah, I think there's a very real possibility of getting that checkpoint. If you can pull it off, Spencer what? drops a blizzard. That's actually huge. Three members go down to the blizzard. I really did not like it when it was thrown, but my yeah. golly, did I not know what I was talking about in that moment. Forgotten will pick up Spencer with that beam online. And again, unfortunately, the sim just not making the waves it needs to to get that success. This should be Ball State at least getting forward spawn. Not super sure about the lead of those. I think the bot just kind of sits still for a sec after he caps a point. Yeah, so they, they'll keep lead. Fisher is very aggressive, though. Yeah, I mean, the Ana was the first one coming out there. It was Neb diving off the bridge, trying to get things lined up, and it looks like it is going to work pretty well. A knife catch, a carnage goes out. Ball State trying to recalibrate, but unfortunately, they just can't get it. Might be too little too late. Two meter differential, 100 seconds left on the clock, and some of the best tracking we've seen in ages from Forgotten as a surprise to, I think, absolutely nobody. Yeah, it just it's normal things here. Normal things from Forgotten. Most of them will get close spawn. I think the only one that may not is Spencer. We'll have to see if they actually get it here in the last second. They do. Everybody gets close spawn. Forgotten. They're a no way. lost in the sauce. Oh my goodness. Three HP just barely left alive. The pulse bomb going to be whipped by Forgotten. And a blade to boot from Keller is here to clean up the rest of the crew. NCF goes down. Keller... The blade, pretty quiet actually. A phenomenal play from Manby to box them out. Rampage from Avani finds both supports, and unfortunately, with the bleed out, it's gonna catch Raven Strider. 160, Avani's 2K. Not looking as good as they want to against Fisher College, Ball State University, 60 seconds, and this might be the end of the series.
Ball State need to win this fight decisively without using too much if they want to at least have a chance. And well, I, I think those chances might have just withered away. Three staggers onto Ball State and Fisher. They're almost at the spawn doors, just trying to make sure this bot can get as far as it can without any sort of pressure. And well, they got Nano as well, Pulse Bomb. This they might be able to lock it up here, Matt. The lockup is uh. 30 seconds away, not the Absolucio coming into the fight once again. And Fisher College, they've got so many ultimates to work with here, Salty. And oh, okay, did the nano? Yeah, okay, it did. It got onto Keller. I wasn't sure if it landed in time. And it looks like it did just enough for this team to be able to clean Absolute House. Spencer saved by the beat, and now 10 seconds remaining. Ball State University barely at the scraps of a team right now as they're all being sent back to spawn. Yakes are off the map. Three seconds left, and nobody there to make it happen. That should be a Fisher College 4-0 victory, but maybe not yet as Manway. Desperation Doomfist back into the fray. Yeah, why not throw the Doomfist in there for a little bit of a clip potentially at the end, but instead, oh, they almost punched themselves off the map. Yeah. <laughs> and that would have been uh, an awkward end to the Would have been a clip. Would have, would, have, would, have, would have made the dream come true, but Fisher College, with the most dominant series I have seen in a fat minute here over Ball State University Red, are going to be your ECAC Grand Finalist Champions. First place, walking away with that trophy, that MVP trophy, and those medals, and a, a spot at CECC that they already had, and Ball State walking away with a trophy, some medals, and a spot at CECC Arlington. So everybody walking away pretty happy, even if this was a four. Yeah, obviously Fisher probably a little bit happier. Naturally, uh, naturally. Obviously. Yeah, uh, I think Ball State, you take this as, hey, we have a lot to learn still before sure. next weekend because it is a pretty short turnaround time. It is only next weekend to where, you know, we'll all get to see how that ends up going. You, you know, you and I will be there in person to, to kind of hang out and see how the games go. But it's a rough patch for Ball State because that, I think, exposed a lot of their weaknesses and adaptability when yes. for Fisher, it showed a completely different look on this JQ comp that honestly looks pretty dang good right now. Yeah, and I think that's why I'm being so critical, right, is there really was not a lot of versatility. We saw almost no. the exact same team comp from Ball State every single time, and there are metas in the world of Overwatch where you can play the same characters every single time, and it works, but we are not currently in one of those. You need to be adapting. You need to be changing, and we saw them try a little bit there toward the end of Coliseo, but after, or only after a point where I was like, yeah, this map's probably over, right? So, unfortunately, yeah. it didn't work out as well as they wanted, but they still get an Arlington ticket they still get a trophy and they get some medals to boot so they can be excited about that we're gonna throw it to a quick break hopefully get an interview with somebody from fisher college we'll see you right back here in just a couple minutes and 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 then and then what the maybe the realities of it, it, it all TPS colon slash slash twitter.com slash septilence. Don't put that in. I'll get in trouble. So that's that's worth it. That's worth it. Did I get too close to the camera on that one? A little bit too close. Should I should I oh should I back up a little bit? Okay, sorry about that. My bad. I've been awake for probably close to 32 hours. Like I have to like hold my keyboard like the normal way. Because if I do it, I feel like I have arthritis and I hold my keyboard like that. It blows my mind. I can never do that. Like, this kid this guy right here, he's got his keyboard like off at an angle. His isn't that extreme. There's a kid all the way down to the far end who has his keyboard all the way at like a horizontal. Yeah. It's really cool. They're gonna be at that table right over there. Public information. Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> this isn't live, so it doesn't matter. It's not live, but like you and I know. Yeah, we know. I'm not gonna tweet it. Awesome. What game do you play? Smash Bros. Who do you play? Is it embarrassing? Is it like Villager? Yeah. <laughs> Is it Villager? Am I spot on? Oh my god. It's embarrassing. Is it the Ice Climber? No. Is it Game & Watch? No. Is it Pichu? No. Is it Wario? No. I can keep going. I think yeah, I can no, name every no, character no, in the game. I believe in you. Is it, did I say the Ice Climbers already? Yeah, you said them. Is yeah, it them? them? Is it them a second time? No. Okay. All right. Um, oh, is it one of the links? Yes, it is. Is it Toon Link? It is. Oh, that is pretty embarrassing. Is that is rough. Who do you play? I'll give you $20 if you guess correctly right now. First try? First try. Give me a single hint. It's an obscure character. An obscure character. Not played very often. Is it We Fit Trainer? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm the interviewer for a reason, baby. I do what I do. I don't need the money. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. Hi. So, Bowser Jr., We Fit, and I. <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> 
Are you all lying to me? Am I being gaslit? No, no, no. Bowser Jr., We Fit, and... You told me already. Oh, uh, Toon Link. Yep. Where's my main support at? Bye. Who are we playing this weekend? Uh, a lot of Brig. A lot of Brig, really? Brig Lucio, probably. Brig Lucio, really? I shouldn't say that too loud. I don't want to give all your strategies. It's over under. What do you mean over under? Like, like, do we think we're going to podium? Do we think we're going to come in last place? Not last place. Not last place. Certainly not last place. What about, like, fifth place? That's doable. That's doable? That's, that's winnable? Third place? <laughs> there, there, mm, like, that's where, that's where things that's get like, dicey? Like, that's very doable. Okay. First place? That's very doable. First place, very doable. Love it. That's the mindset. That's what he loves to hear. Yeah. Oh my God. Hold on. Cut the cameras. Well, who are you? Hello. Oh my God. I saw you earlier. I saw the back of your shirt. And I was like, I was like, I know that name. I know him. It's a quick play game. They they Q snipe each other at land. I thought it was a scrim. This is unlucky. Are you actually a villager player? Yeah. How do you feel about villager being notably worse in Smash Ultimate than they were in Smash Four? Uh, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You never played Smash Four? No. Oh, that's all right. Nobody, nobody's gonna hold that against you. Now, who do you play? I play Robin. Okay. Wow. Did you know Robin has the lowest pick rate in the game? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Come on. The LEDs. It looks just like Samus. Huh? Do you disagree? I guess I can see. The it. Samus vibe. Show the controller to the camera. We're interviewing. This is recording, by the way. Surprise. No, my Who do you play? I play Peach. Oh, oh, wow. I like that. Who do you play? I play the Shotos, mostly Kazi. No, you lose against Kirby. Yeah, lose against Kirby. That's just like a statistics thing. Yeah. It's maybe. maybe. <laughs> this is a death match. I think they're all in the same one. They're all on Icebox. Are they, oh, they, are they all in the same death match? Maybe. Who knows? I feel like none of them can hear me. I want to like approach somebody, but no one, no one can hear. They all have both their headphones on. What's up? How do we think we're doing? I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. What's, what's your kitty? Uh, we're looking at 10 and 6 right now. Oh, hey, that's third, dude. That's better than I expected. Who's who's bottom frag right now? I want to go talk to them. Ian? Hey, how do you think we're doing so far? Uh, you know, it could be better. Could be better? Could be one of those rough days? Well, you know. Let's go find more people to harass. Yeah. Where's, Bo where's Boise State? Best Who's your favorite to play? Oh, right now, it's got to be their Chamber of Breach. What country is Cypher from? Oh, dude. Um, it's Moroccan, right? It is Morocco! Oh, my God. I don't think anyone is going to get that. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> All right, see you later. Let's go harass Boise State more. Who is this? What school is this? Boise? This is Boise. Oh man, that's okay. Boise still got really good odds. A large bagel, one of their tank players, Nerdy Bird, they're off tank, both of them not here. A little bit scary for being honest. Getting warmed up, getting ready to hey, cast some players. No, cannot cast, interview. There we go. Change of mindset, change of mindset. Words. Oh, you you no, but last words until we until we come back. Oh, okay. We're leaving. Enjoy. Oh, that was good, that was good. Anything from you? How are you doing, Polly? Awesome, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Again, that, that's why we're here, right? This is why every, a lot of people are trying to figure out, you know, how do we replicate what you guys are doing? How do we, you know, how do they do what you guys are doing to a degree? Or why are you guys doing what you're doing to a degree? But you know, to kind of, I think, focus in then a little bit more, I, I want to talk about gameplay a little bit before we jump into to business and, and all of the other stuff, you know, Jensen, this one, this one's for you, right? I want to talk a little bit about this because to, to someone like me, who's, you know, who's traditionally a League of Legends fan and all that, I know that you've been a coach that's been, you know, all over the world. You've worked. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ECAC Grand Finals Overwatch. Septilence and Salty on the mic for you. And if you're just joining us, Fisher College. They won by, like, a lot. A, a very lot. dominant 4-0. <laughs> and we now have the opportunity to interview support superstar and just a good friend of ours, Neb, from Fisher College. So, Neb, first of all, congratulations on yet another grand finals victory for Fisher College. I mean, you were just telling us, like, y'all y'all have essentially cleaned house at this point. Yeah. Uh, well, this is, like, the fourth Overwatch ECAC. So, uh, both semesters, both or my two years competing in collegiate. And then... In the fall, we won all six games, and I think it'll be the same for the spring. So, good, a lot of trophies coming in for Fisher. Yeah, absolutely. So, kind of going into this, you know, there's a lot still ahead in, in the future for Fisher College, right? You guys are nowhere near done with kind of your scholastic season so far. So, did you kind of use today as as a bit of a warm up for those larger tournaments that you've got coming up very soon? Yeah. So we have a, a LAN in Foxborough at B, the Boston Uprising and Collegiate Cup. So that was the roster that we we're having today. But we're going to include Faded for that one as well. So we'll have like a main tank as well as an off tank. But this is that was our TPS lineup for it. And I think we're, we're confident going into Saturday. For sure. Uh, you have a lot of reasons to be confident, I think. Especially Forgotten today was just on another level. 
How are you guys feeling with this JQ comp? You guys showed it a lot today, oh, yeah. and it seemed like no matter what Ball State ran, you guys found a way to play around it. Yeah, we haven't played the JQ comp in a couple months. We just we're having fun with it. So. Okay, that's so scary. Fair play. Like that's that is so that's... scary to hear someone yeah. say that. I've never played that well in my entire life, and he's like, "Yeah, no, we're just being silly. We're just having a good time." That's that's so scary. Yeah. yeah. So Norm normally it's me on the Licia, and then Abs would be on Brig, but we were just playing on a Licia and me on Ana just for fun. Yeah, it worked. Fair play. Um, for CCC now. You know, that's only a week and a half away. How are you guys feeling going into that? Is there any team you're looking at extra, or are you guys feeling pretty good right now? I'm feeling good. I'm going to go down there, have some fun. I think my family's showing up, so you'll get to meet hey. Mama Neb again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love Mama <laughs> Neb. Yeah, that is that is so exciting. And I know we are super excited to have you guys there as well. Fisher always, as you mentioned, always puts on a show, always goes for the gold, and it is always amazing. So, Neb, one more quick question for you, and then we're going to let you hit the road so we can call it a night. Anybody you want to give just a thank you or a shout-out to while you're here with us? Uh, shout-out my mom, my stepdad. Uh, and then shout out my grandparents who are watching in chat. They made Twitch uh, accounts yay. for me. Oh, it's so cute. I love that. I love that awesome. so much. Well, hey, Neb, a huge congrats, brother, and best of luck to you in all your tournaments down the line. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And with that, folks, we are going to go ahead and call it a night here at the ECAC for Overwatch 2, but Fisher College 4-0 victory and a good one at that. A big shout out to Rhino, our in-game observer, Leighton, our producer, both teams for coming out tonight. And of course, all of you for watching. If you want to watch a little bit more ECAC League of Legends finals, Ohio Northern, as an Ohio local myself, very exciting, versus Albany with Horizon and RMC. So go ahead and check that out this upcoming Friday, folks. It's going to be a good one. Thank you all so much for watching. Check your posture, drink some water, don't forget to love each other, and we'll ECAC you in the next one. Have a good night. We're at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. Let's make some noise. Oh, and it's going to be good. The corner judge is going for one, two, ten. He needs more. In the They're doing even more here. You gotta touch the point. Mr. College walks it in. Joy Boy is going to drop. Knife him. Right out front. Yeah. Three, oh, two, one. Please. Running. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that fact. That's so cute. UCF, and it's really cute. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move down here. How do we feel? The odds for UCF? What are we thinking? They got it. No, we got this. Got we got this. We got this. Go Knights, charge on. Hundred percent. My friend Nick is behind you. He's gonna record it. Don't look at him. Don't. You'll ruin the shot. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Come on. Oh, let's go! Let's go! My smile's probably really creepy. I was just being weird. Oh, I love being in the shadows, though. Big shout out to the shadows. We could interview Dilly just because I think he's handsome. You weren't, you weren't supposed to hear it. Here's the thing about the event. Uh, I'm the greatest that's ever lived. Literally true. I know him. I, I think everyone knows that. I think everyone's aware of that. Hey, do you have a VIP access badge on? I actually have an all access. Oh, an all access. I thought it said VIP and access. Only, and that's only available for the best. That's true. He's right. That's a main stage TO right there. <laughs> If this goes live, I'm suing everybody. It's all right. A video of me, the first clip is me saying, don't put that in. And then it was the first. Cut, 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 cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Oh, you're recording already? Great. So this is going to, uh, this is Bay State versus UCF. I believe something that we saw yesterday on day one of the tournament. But instead, we're going to have that run back here. I think they're fighting for a spot in grand finals. Anarchy, one of the best Greninja players in the United States, currently struggling against a Terry. Terry Notorious for that DLC privilege, being a very strong character with some very strong abilities. Ninja, 
Not so much, considered one of the weaker characters in the game. The Falco player, one of the best in the United States, and he just got spiked by a Terry. Same Terry that took out Anarchy literally minutes ago. UCF still up by two stocks. This guy is looking to rip this team apart single-handedly. That is, I mean, nuts, to say the very least. Absolutely absurd. That was a disgusting spike. I cannot believe that happened. Will you hold the microphone so I can sign this? <laughs> Sorry. For context, he's uh, he's got a fan. He's actually signing something. He's so excited. my voice for two minutes for 30 seconds maybe what was it like probably bliss we oh i was signing a mouse pad which is really cool i've never done that before nobody's ever asked me for a signature so i i'm gonna start blushing but i was i'm really excited about that and then he wants a picture can you take a picture of us yeah. i said is it bad she went no <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and take that as a yes turns out i can't tie a tie sitting down what do you think is the appropriate face to screen ratio for a valorant player face to screen like how close i sit yeah like how player. close should a player sit personally i play really really close i think uh it depends on your eyesight but for me i like playing close because it helps me focus on my crosshair. Is the value is the value of sitting close the crosshair being the only thing in your line of sight? Yeah, that's pretty much the uh, main benefit of it. It's so funny how close some of these guys sit. Oh my goodness. What do you think is the healthy face to screen distance for a Valorant player? I think it's all kind of personal preference. I guess I would consider myself like pretty close when I play because sure. I like to like zone in on my crosshair. It is the second person to say that. It's all about the crosshair. And then what's up with the horizontal keyboard? I don't know. Like it just kind of fits like the form when I'm close to monitor like I don't know it, it might sound cringy but I like to like be one with my gun you know? no bro I feel it I feel it absolutely What is going on, everybody? I am here with some UCF fans. How are we feeling about UCF? Let's go! Let's go! We've got a bunch of UCF fans in the crowd right now. UCF, they are up by a single game. They're